There we go. Saturday night prime time, New Year's Eve. As much as I'm excited for Ohio State to right the wrongs of this season, this is going to be ridiculously tough. You couldn't ask for more Titanic battle. You know how prepared Georgia's defense will be for this Ohio State offense with C.J. Stroud. This isn't the first time they counted me out, and it won't be the last. Stroud, right down the middle, touchdown, Ohio State. Go down there, we win. We have a chance to be legends forever. It's a trifecta. You know they're defending national champs. You know we're going to be underdogs. You know we're going into their backyard. Good. At the University of Georgia, we ain't being hunted. We hunt. <laughs> Georgia is now the program against who everyone else tries to measure themselves. I think we'll talk history after we play two more football games. There ain't no doubt in my mind this team is ready. Today we're going against the Green Apartment. We're going to find a way to win this game. Plays are going to be made, so either you're going to bark or you're going to bite. Talking is over. It's time to go play. College football playoff semifinal Saturday shifts to Atlanta, the epicenter of college football. And the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl hosts the semifinal for the third time. It's a heavyweight collision. The top seed Georgia Bulldogs earned the right to play close to home. The Ohio State Buckeyes off a three touchdown home loss to Michigan get into this bracket via the back door when USC stumbled at the final hurdle. That's a big subplot tonight. This is the Ram Trucks kickoff and TCU awaits the winner in Los Angeles a week from Monday. Chris Fowler, Kirk Herbstreit, this is something rare and special here. Just the second time these two teams have met and already a shocker in semifinal one. Unbelievable, you know, everybody came into this with a long layoff expecting Michigan to be too physical for TCU. Horn Frogs clearly not listening to that. They came out early, Michigan fights back. At end of the day, the Horn Frogs advance and Sonny Dykes in his first year advances to the national championship. Congrats to the Horn Frogs. A roster with no playoff experience, no postseason experience at all until this game today. Georgia comes in as the favorite over Ohio State. They're the benchmark program. They've been the heavyweight the last couple of seasons. Rocking and socking number one Tennessee at home this year. They knocked out Michigan early at this stage a year ago and finally knocked out Alabama. Snapping a seven game skid against their nemesis to win the championship in Indy. They walk in here with the belt and the SEC belt, which they won here a month ago. It's incredible to think what this team lost a year ago, winning the championship. Five first rounders off their defense. Seems like the entire defense. Just a handful of guys back. But they have reloaded on that side of the ball. But let's be honest, this team is really known for the quarterback over these last couple years. And that's Stetson Bennett. His leadership. Keep in mind, this guy's a former walk-on. They had to fight his way to earn the respect of the coaches and his own fan base until he won it all last year. He's been better this year with his decision making. He's an outstanding leader. Ohio State knows tonight they got to match the physicality at the line of scrimmage, and they've got to do a good job of containing not just his arm, but his ability to make plays with his feet. Spectacular big game quarterback, MVP of those two playoff wins a year ago. C.J. Stroud comes in here. He's becoming a more vocal leader, and that's been needed since that punishing home loss to Michigan. They thought they were out, and they've got second life, and that's been C.J.'s rallying cry to his teammates. Yeah, and whether it's good enough or not, we'll see. But Ohio State's an angry football team. They're used to hearing all the comments compliments when they play games. They didn't just lose to Michigan at home. They were embarrassed and they were questioned about it for over a month. And it, I think nobody represents that better than C.J. Stroud as the leader of this team. He has a chip on his shoulder, feels that his own fan base at times has turned on him. What better way to avenge that loss to Michigan than trying to beat the defending national champs right here in Atlanta, Georgia? He's pretty good under pressure, but Kirby Smart says if we can't affect C.J. Stroud, make him play poorly, we're going to lose the game. Can Ryan Day and the Buckeyes engineer upset tonight in the Bulldogs' backyard? Out of respect, brother. Out of respect, man. Let's go, Tommy. Have a great day, man. Run around. Fly around. Rocking people off the ball. All day, big man. Let's go. First defense. First offense. Here we go, man. Here we go. Here we go. Getting physical with the head coach in the warm-up. Day calls the plays against Kirby Smart in that defense. Back in 60 seconds, you're watching the Ram Trucks kickoff.
And welcome back inside Mercedes-Benz Stadium and the Ram Trucks kickoff. Georgia Bulldogs third visit to this ballpark, which is 71 miles away from Sanford Stadium. They blew out Oregon in the opener and LSU a month ago to win the SEC championship. And it'll feel pretty much like a Georgia home game tonight. Ohio State has never played in this building. And 71 players on this roster have never taken the field as underdogs. It's a new experience. They feel like it's Ohio against the world, Kirk, and that's been a successful formula in the past. In the past, when they, they feel disrespected, like I said in the open, they, they tend to show up out to prove everybody wrong, a very united front, kind of an us against the world mentality, and they certainly have showed up that way tonight. And again, is it good enough? We'll find out in the next 60 minutes of football. Ohio State has the one win for the Big Ten head-to-head -head against the SEC in the playoff. That was the upset of number one Atlanta or Alabama back in New Orleans that springboarded them to the national championship. SEC in the playoff is 12 and three against other conferences. Here is Jalen Carter, the force in the inside of that Georgia defense. We'll say this about the energy. The captain's getting ready to come out in this building. Georgia, remember the Michigan game last year in the semifinal, they jump on the opponents typically. They try to bully the opponent. Ohio State, very important for them to kind of show that same aggression and not back down, be super aggressive. Ryan Day emphasizing that he felt in the second half against Michigan. Maybe they, they got a little careful, got a little conservative tonight. Said we're throwing everything out there, being aggressive in every aspect of the game. Kirk, I don't think you're going to see jabs early sparring day believes he's going to take a lot of points to win this game he studied the playoff history he knows how good georgia's offense is chris coit who was the referee for lsu's championship game win over clemson in charge of this pac-12 crew gentlemen happy new year and welcome to the college football playoff chick-fil-a peach bowl i'm chris coit the referee this is greg adams our umpire we're from the pac-12 conference we're honored to be here today and we congratulate both teams for earning the opportunity to compete for a chance at a national title. Now, a special occasion requires a special coin. On one side of tonight's coin is the logo of the college football playoff and the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. This is heads. This is heads. On the other side of the coin is the image of Mercedes-Benz Stadium. This is tails. This is tails. Ohio State, you're the visiting team. Heads or tails? Heads. Heads. Heads is the call. It is tails. Georgia is one. Georgia is deferring their choice to the second half. Ohio State, you're going to take the ball. Which way would you like to kick? Then you're going to turn your backs this way. Ohio State, slide around. Great to have Holly Rowe and Laura Rutledge working the sidelines for us tonight. Laura is with Kirby Smart. Thank you, Chris. Coach, how is the best way to affect C.J. Stroud? To rush him and affect him with coverage, batted balls, pressure. We got to win some one-on-ones inside and outside to affect him. You said that this team's ready for a fight. Why is that? They're built that way. They fight every day in practice. So today's an opportunity to go out. What a great atmosphere to go play. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. To Holly Rowe with Ryan Day. Well, Coach Day, it's not often in life you get second chances. You've been preaching that with your team. What are some important keys early to go out and grab this one? Well, the first thing is it's been a long month, so it's time to go let it rip. We're going to go let it rip. And we're going to be physical early on and make plays, but it's going to be a long night. Just going back and forth, that's the way these games go. So uh, we're just going to swing as hard as we possibly can, look up after 60 minutes and see where we're at. Thanks, Coach. All right, you got it. Chris? Day told his team after the Michigan loss, look, this is going to happen. Utah is going to beat USC. TCU's going to lose, and you're going to get another chance, and it's come to pass so far, but now the, the ultimate assignment in sports, beat the Bulldogs in this building. Big a challenge as you can have. Kirby Smart won the toss and deferred, so get a kickoff here, and the Buckeyes offense will go to work. Julian Fleming and Xavier Johnson are deep. Lesney, ultra reliable kicker to boot it away for the Bulldogs. Kirby's right, this is a great atmosphere.
Johnson will let it bounce into the end zone. So here comes C.J. Stroud, who was spectacular in his only previous postseason game at the Rose Bowl. I'm C.J. Stroud, quarterback for the Ohio State University. Stroud on fire tonight. I was a backup to Justin Fields in 2020. After two straight years as a Heisman finalist, I want to bring the title back to Columbus. 37 touchdown passes, just six interceptions, and so much on the shoulders of C.J. Stroud tonight for Ohio State. Their running game is depleted. We'll detail that. Expect a lot of pass attempts, and they'll throw to begin the game. And Stroud has a clean pocket and finds his top target, Marvin Harrison Jr., who's got a 10-yard gain and a quick first down. And with motion there from uh, Emeka Abuka, you're going to see Marvin Harris move around. He's typically into the boundary as that X receiver, and he was lined up there. But with Abuka motioning, he went into the slot and got a favorable matchup. And there's that aggress aggressive attitude that you're referring to, Chris, there on first and 10 to open this game. Harrison, a Bolitnikoff Award finalist. Many felt he should have won the award. Here's a handoff inside to Dallin Hayden. It's running back by committee. You don't see Mayan Williams. He may be able to go in there, but of course, Trevian Henderson out with that foot surgery. Some tough sledding in there. Yeah. If you've not watched Georgia play since Kirby Smart's taken over, he brought the same blueprint that Nick Saban's coached with for a lot of years, where they are tough between the tackles to run the ball. They're tops in the country, only allowing 77 yards a game. Ohio State has to run some to make Georgia aware of it. Just keeping them honest, right? Stroud looking to throw on second and seven. Has time, misfires. He threw outside. Harrison had cut back inside. Healy Ringo, that's a good matchup tonight. He was in coverage. Yeah, I think everybody during this layoff, you, you know, you run out of things to talk about. One of the things was Marvin Harrison against Ringo. You see that inside leverage. I think because he had that leverage, C.J. Stroud recognized that and wanted to put the ball to the outside where it would have been a little bit easier. Marvin felt he could still work inside, so that was the reason there was a little miscommunication there. Third and long against this Georgia defense is a nightmare. And here comes the noise. Working with a silent count like it's a road game. Georgia rushes forward, but they get home. And a quick sack coming on the blitz. Smile Munden. Watch this, watch this movement right here by the two linebackers. It looks like you're going to see move from Dumas Johnson. And Dumas Johnson backs out. And then you see M Munden come through, confuse the offensive line when Dumas Johnson 10 backed out of there. I think they thought the blitz was off, but instead they rotate, and, and Munden ends up coming home for the, for the sack. Stroud sack for just the ninth time this season. So Jesse Mirko to boot it away, and Harris Jackson makes a fair catch at the 25. And here comes Stetson Bennett. What an amazing career. It's like a movie script. And more chapters to be written. Well, Stetson Bennett, I mean... Stetson Bennett, quarterback, lifelong Georgia Bulldog. I was a walk-on and a junior college transfer. And then became national champion and a Heisman finalist. And now we're back to win another title. <laughs> if it, again, maybe they're Ohio State fans or other fans, neutral fans watching. It, it's just you, you hear a guy say, I was a walk-on and then a junior college transfer in one career, and now you've won one national championship and you're trying to get your second. It's a movie script. They throw it, and there's a catch made on the far side. That's the first since week two by Adane Mitchell. They're hoping he can come back, shake off the rust, and give a big effort tonight. Yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a big matchup on the perimeter. So much talk about the tight ends, but I think Georgia feels very confident that they can win on the outside against these Ohio State corners. Remember, when they played man-to-man -man against Michigan, gave up some big plays on the perimeter. Georgia will definitely test him on the outside. Mitchell had a really bad high ankle sprain, missed nine games. First down throw again, and there's a catch made to Marcus Mosby, Jack Saint. So let's check the Chick-fil-A impact players, Kurt. Uh, you, you're going to see a lot of speed and a lot of big playability. Brock Bowers, and we just saw A.D. Mitchell and what he can do on the outside. So they're going to throw the football quite a bit. Tui Moloau, number 44, actually on that first play, he almost got pressure. And he's going to have to be able to do a good job of from the outside of, of getting pressure on Stetson Bennett. And then against these tight ends, the safeties will be tested. Lathan Ransom, 12, 
is a guy to keep an eye on trying to do the best he can. You're going to give up some plays, but you can't allow yards after the catch. Aggressive approach from Todd Munkin, who calls the plays. Georgia looking to throw again. Bennett across the middle, and the catch is made. And that's Mitchell making an instant impact in his welcome back game. They're threatening inside the 40. Uh, you get a little bit of play action. Watch the linebackers from Ohio State right here. They come up because of that look, and it opened up right behind the backers. 22-yard gain. Bennett from the pocket again, slings it off his back foot. And breaking off throughout that time was Mitchell. Mixing a little tempo. They'll do that from time to time. Surprise the defense and us. I mean, it's that it's that kind of offense. Here's that look. A little play action. See the backers, their eyes in the backfield. That's the biggest challenge they have tonight is Todd Monk and the offensive coordinator mixing physicality with play action. Usually, Chris, it, it involves the tight ends, but these first few plays, it's it's been Mitchell, five on the outside. Those big tight ends, Brock Bowers won the Mackey Award, best at his position, and Big O, Darnell Washington, matchup nightmares for defenses all season long. Empty backfield on second and ten. Bennett has plenty of time again and finds Big O, Washington over the middle. He's just hard to guard. Eichenberg gets him down near the marker. He's 6'7", 270, and, and the, the thing that I've seen so far is the, how aggressive they are. Five plays and five passes from Georgia. Really quick now. Bennett flushed chased and he'll take a short loss there knocked out of bounds pursued by steel chambers well watch this if he hands this off watch the backers coming down we saw this against michigan if he hands that off to six goodbye walks to the end zone instead he pulls it unfortunate for georgia very fortunate for ohio state here comes the field goal attempt so that's a it's a big stop on third down, a potential four-point swing. Podlesny out to attempt a long field goal of 47 yards. Very solid, 23 of 26 on the season. This has been near the edge of his range in games. And he drives it, but it drifts wide left. So the big stop on the scramble on third down and the missed field goal. And Georgia comes up empty on its first possession. This is the third time he's kicked on this surface. He's comfortable here, but just missed that one. Intriguing matchup when Ohio State has the football. They were number two in scoring offense, almost 45 a game. Georgia's second, allowing fewer than 13 points. And when they stepped in against offenses that were high-powered and hype, like Tennessee, they smothered them early. They, they passed every yeah. test in a big game. Missouri, the only team to really play them close. Yeah, you, and you wonder if that was a little bit of an outlier show up on the road, not quite focused. Missouri deserves some credit there, but that Georgia team came back to win it. Think about Ohio State, all these points. That's without mainly Trevion Henderson, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. Both those guys were Heisman candidates in August. Stroud, deep drop, and looks and has Harrison wide open. Kamari Lasseter just lost him in coverage there in Georgia territory. Uh, he goes against Kamari Lasseter. Watch him turn him right here. Watch this route by Marvin Harrison. Sells it to the inside there. Puts his foot in the ground and separates. Lasseter gets turned around. Again, that's sick without Jackson Smith and Jigba. Number 18 is who they're going to be dialing up. Often they're going to move him all over the place to try to create matchups because many feel he's the most gifted receiver in college football this year. 24-yard gain, 74th catch of the season. Xavier Johnson, a receiver, lines up in the backfield. They fake it to him, and Stroud moves the pocket and flips it across the middle, and it's complete. And it's Emeka Abuka who will try to work the middle of that Georgia defense tonight. Yeah, G Georgia trying to, maybe you heard Kirby say, hey, we're going to try to do the best job we can of affecting C.J. Stroud. What they're doing is they're blitzing. Nice movement by C.J. Stroud in the pocket. Just buying just subtle movement in the pocket. Good awareness, but his vision downfield to be able to make that throw. That was smart sphere. Clean pocket, clean throwing lanes for C.J. Stroud. Second play in a row, they go after Kamari Lasseter, that time with Ibuka. Dallin Hayden off the left side. Kirk pointed out how tough it is. You get three on first down, Zier Stackhouse made the stop. And, and the reason is, a lot of it is 
technique. A lot of it is the way they recruit. They recruit big bodies on that defensive line. Very tough to just move them. And what they do is they eat up those double teams. It's hard for the offensive linemen to climb up to the linebackers. So they're, they're occupied up front, and then it frees the backers in the run game to get downhill to usually stop the run game. Stackhouse and Carter, what a tandem inside. Stackhouse, second team all SEC. Carter rated perhaps the top overall pick on the draft board. Plenty of time for Stroud. Directing receivers, flips it to the end zone. Caught, touchdown! Marvin Harrison Jr. making a huge impact, and the Buckeyes draw first blood, 31 yards. This is beautiful, Chris. Watch the job of the coverage downfield. Watch the job of this defense, and watch how C.J. Stroud work. Look at the pocket. Look at the pocket. Now watch Marvin Harrison. And watch what C.J. Stroud does with his hand. Get over. He turns him and directs him to that corner, and that's how he gets separation. Given that much time with his accuracy and those receivers, it's a, it's a nightmare. And George, remember, gave up more than 500 passing yards in this building to LSU. And see that point? Hey, man, get over to that right corner, and I'm going to hit you. Puts it right where Marvin Harris can make a play, and the Buckeyes find some confidence here early, up seven. The college football semifinal at the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl is brought to you by Chick-fil-A. It's the little things that make game day worth celebrating. AT&T 5G. Too much college football is never too much. And Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. Buckeye fans loud but outnumbered here tonight. Aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear. Celebrating the challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear more driven final day of 2022 glad that you're with us here early fireworks for the underdog visitors from Ohio State Stroud to Harrison as he beat Malachi Starks the true freshman in coverage beautifully directed by CJ as you pointed out yeah th this whole month my thought was you know when this matchup came out you thought boy for Ohio State the fact they got in whoever they play it ends up being Georgia they need to start fast because of that Michigan game. They need to be able to put that behind them, reestablish their confidence, get settled in, and get ready to play football. We'll see how that uh, goes. But that was a big turn of events to miss field goal and then the touchdown. Stroud, 3-for-3 three for, three for 68 on the drive. Jaden Fielding, kickoff specialist, pounds it out of the back of the end zone. The only previous meeting between the Bulldogs and the Buckeyes. You got to go back to the Citrus Bowl. Number four at quarterback in those big shoulder pads. He had Robert Smith, but they had Garrison Hurst. They did have Garrison <laughs> Hurst, Andre Hastings, Eric Sire. We had Robert Smith. Eddie George was on that team. Look away, look we, away. We drove look away. late. <laughs> we drove late. That's a, called a trap color check. You go red or white. Fullback Herb White. I called red. He runs into me, fumble. And Eric Zire led him right down for the game-winning touchdown. Great game. Georgia is always so good. Eric does the analysis on the Georgia radio broadcast. So the dogs got an answer here. They're known for fast starts themselves. They find themselves behind, and Ladd McConkey is dragged down behind the line of scrimmage. That's Zach Harrison invading the backfield. So that's not just making a play. That's seeing that he's coming in motion. Once he comes in motion, he's able to get, he sees that. Now he knows the threat of that potential handoff there, that little flip. So he gets up field just in case he gets the football. McConkey is one of the faster, quicker receivers that Georgia has. So not just a good play getting up field, but the recognition by the veteran Zach Harrison. Respected by the draft analysts, all Big Ten defensive end. Puts Georgia seven yards behind the sticks now. Bennett flips it short. McIntosh is an excellent receiver out of the backfield. They use him a lot, but Eichenberg tracks him down after a pretty short game. Jim Knowles took a lot of criticism after that Michigan game. And a lot of it had to do with he's just uh, playing a lot of zero and, and man. And he told us in our meeting yesterday that, that he thought he would be more a little more conservative. Get eyes on the football. Let these guys play and, and play fast with looking at the quarterback and looking once the ball is out of his hands and rallying. And it's another example of it there on second down. How many times did he say limit explosive plays? Was it a dozen maybe? <laughs> he said it a bunch. Bennett faces third and ten. Buckeyes show pressure. Don't bring it. 
And the ball looped to the sidelines and coming back to make a catch beautifully is Dominic Blaylock. Well, anytime, anytime you get a matchup with a slot fade with a receiver against the safety, you take it. And the reason, Tanner McAllister never locates the football. He's in decent position, but from word go, Blaylock's able to beat him off the line of scrimmage, and it's tough for those safeties to match up in man-to-man. -man. Pick up 20 on third and 10, and Bennett, like Stroud, sharp at the start, seven for eight. Agent Edwards is the back. You'll see three tailbacks for Georgia tonight. They hand it to him running left. Stiff arm delivered against Chambers. Physical runner picks up about four. These linebackers know they are going to have to flow, not just step up and get downhill. They got to get outside. That time Tommy Eichenberg, the leader on this defense, he, he took the the edge of that 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 uh, pulling guard away, so it allowed Steel Chambers to be able to run and get to the outside. Made a pretty good play in space there. Kind of Georgia like, much like Ohio State, just for now throwing a few runs in there, but clearly feels that they can throw the ball against the Buckeye secondary. Haven't yet targeted Brock Bowers, the elite tight end who's lined up on the left side of the formation. Hands it off inside. Bouncing off tackles. Edwards roaming free, banging down to the Ohio State 35. They didn't wrap him up. Not easy to do. Now, Jack Sawyer, who's coming around from the back side to your left, to your top, he, he actually has a chance to wrap him up right there. Lathan Ransom's right there. And to the credit of Edwards, he just keeps that leg drive going, will not be brought down. 200 pounds, but he runs bigger than that. Edwards, McIntosh, and Kendall Milton all tough to stop and they rotate them trying to keep them fresh you mentioned brock bowers boy a great block that time there he'll lull you to sleep block block and then release on a play action pass milton is in the game they fake it to him bennett rolls out and puts it on the bootleg and there's the first catch by bowers who's really hard to tackle himself and the dogs are threatening cam brown gets him to the ground but they're in the red zone just said he'll block you he'll block you and just when you think okay 19's just setting the edge for this offense he'll come back and go play action because the linebackers have to respect this run game that's georgia football really i know you've seen them come out spread and throw but they want to run they want to affect the eyes of a defense make them get downhill and then pull it boot and throw to those tight ends we talked about when it's strength versus strength. That's not the case here. George is not a great offense in the red zone in terms of touchdown percentage. They're below average, but Ohio State's defense, Kirk, has struggled in the red zone, too. Bennett. He'll be dropped. Had time. Initially, Steel Chambers got him, and then JT Tuiamotoa, the big play linebacker. Jim Knowles said he would bring pressure. He's going to get aggressive from time to time. Look at the two backers coming. See that up, up at the top, Tui Moloau doesn't give up on that effort right there. Steel Chambers, one of the blitzing linebackers, along with Eichenberg. They force him to step up, and Tui Moloau able to get home. First sack of Bennett since October 15th. Wasn't sacked in the last six games. By the way, good coverage allowed that sack to happen there. Vanderbilt got him a couple times in that route. Ball quickly out. McIntosh knifing to the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia. Just like that, the Bulldogs bounce back. Now this is a staple of this offense. Get the ball out in space out here, and then get the lineman out in front, and you get behind it. You'll see the receiver to the outside there, the big tight end, Washington. Throw it, now get behind that convoy of blockers see them finishing blocks on those defensive backs one of the big fellas took a safety and just drove him into the carpet i saw the same thing you did that's one for the offensive line highlight reel that was a true pancake georgia 75 yards and eight plays to quickly answer stroud's touchdown pass and leslie ties the game it was Ratledge 69 downfield, Mims 61 when the big guys get downfield and they watch watch these linemen. Look how athletic they are. They're pushing safeties around. Walks to the end zone. Haymakers early in Atlanta, seven apiece.
Week from Monday, tonight's winner here will head to SoFi City in Los Angeles for the national championship game against the TCU Horn Frog. Kirk, who were 200 to 1 preseason to win the championship. A true Cinderella will be an underdog against the winner here, but they won't care. They'll take that anytime. Congratulations to Sonny Dykes in his first year there as a head coach and the Horn Frog Nation. What an incredible accomplishment to, to get there, to win today as an underdog against Michigan. And, now they're off to uh, to SoFi in L.A. next Monday. That scoring drive, Georgia lost seven yards on the first play, and then Bennett just went to work. Five for five on the drive, including the touchdown to McIntosh, showing that trademark moxie. Well, New Year's Day is an NFL day, but on January 2, Delane and USC kick things off for the Goodyear Cotton Bowl. Our honor to be back at the Rose Bowl where the Nittany Lions will take on the Pac-12 champion Utah Utes. Look forward to both those games. Tulane's had a heck of a year. See what kind of attitude USC shows up with after losing to that Utah team in a Pac-12 championship. And always, anytime you and I and our team get a chance to get to Pasadena, San Gabriel Mountains looking down at us, we'll take it. Put a smile on my face, Kirk. Johnson takes the pitch, and the man who's a Swiss Army knife gets his helmet knocked off on the big tackle there. Is that Chris Smith coming up and delivering yeah. the blow? Yeah, it sure was. One of the few defenders that came back, everybody else seemed to go to the NFL, and Christopher Smith has become the leader on the back end. What a hit. Nice game by Ohio State, and they run the ball to the outside, but boy, Christopher Smith gives you an idea what he likes to do when he comes up from that safety spot. Look who's in the game, Kirk. Mayan Williams, who has battled an ankle injury. Couldn't practice. He looks like a little chunkier. He's a few biscuits heavier than he was for a lot of the season. He's also been battling a stomach bug here in Atlanta this week. Hasn't practiced with the first team very much. How much can they get out of him tonight? He's a physical runner who powers for about a yard and a half. He's a big part of their offense a lot of the year when Henderson was ailing. Yeah, Trevion Henderson was supposed to be the guy, and Mayan Williams is supposed to be that guy. See him kind of limping there, maybe stretching just to, to try to get back into the swing of things. But yeah, Chris, he was kind of that guy that was supposed to be that uh, the one-two punch, the two, right? The, the, the more physical runner, but with Henderson out, he's been, had to become the guy that he's de de dealt with injuries. They've used Dallin Hayden. So it's been a little bit of a revolving door at that spot. Couldn't give him a lot against Michigan. Carried it early and then had to step out. Third and a yard. And banging straight ahead for the first down. That's what he can give you. If he can shake off that rust, he can help me. He wants out now. Smile London on the stop. Great block by Paris Johnson. A left tackle here, Chris. Watch the tight end right there. Eight. Kick out block. Opened up nicely again. Every yard you can get running the football against Georgia inside is a challenge. So positive yards for the first down. It's down Hayden in the tailback. Stroud checks it to a Buka, goes up and makes the high catch. And able to motor for a few yards before. Ringo drove him out. They're trying to drop out. Looks like he doesn't like those socks, whatever they, they put on him to try to help him out. He's asking for those to come off. But uh, that time, great protection again. It's a big story here is can Georgia get pressure on C.J. Stroud? Stroud on the move, flips it out. Stover the tight end, hurdles a man. And the farmer from the state of Ohio. Knocked down short on the first down. Final minute of the quarter. You know, Ohio State going fast. I mean, Georgia not even ready. I mean, they were not even ready. And that ball is being snapped. The defensive lineman just kind of looking around, trying to make sure that they're getting the call right. And then because of that confusion, Stover was able to just sneak out from the, the play side, out the back door to the back side. Gives them a chance here now in third and short. Yeah, third and the long yard hasn't been automatic for this offense. Often it's a passing down. Stroud does throw for it. Luke has got it, and he gets to the Georgia 40-yard line. I think he had a free play. Georgia jumped in the neutral zone yeah, before I think the they snap. Did. Offside, defense number 78. The penalties decline. The result of the play is a first down. 
Georgia brings pressure. Good job of picking up that pressure. But look at the route here by Abuka. That ball's a little high. Bang! Look at those hands. You know, Marvin Harrison gets so much attention, but you better be careful of doubling him and leaving two alone because he can win those one-on-one -on -one matchups, especially with that outside leverage there by Tyke Smith. 500-yard games for Abuki. He's an excellent complimentary wide receiver. Buckeyes on the move as we wrap up the first quarter here. Seven apiece, the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl on ESPN. Except for quarter two, college football playoff semifinal of the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Kirby Smart was fuming, Kirk, because the Buckeyes got away with one on that third and two play. Yeah, third and two, and, and they had the free play because of movement by Georgia. And this is what Georgia was fired up about, the movement right here. Watch the back. Hayden moves subtly. That forces the nose guard to move. And look at the reaction by Georgia's coaches on the sideline. Kirby was going crazy, talking about the back moved. The back moved. That would have been a third and seven. So instead, they convert with a book on that slant. So now to start this second quarter, it's not third and seven, it's first and 10. My man, there he is. The guy doesn't have his, got that tongue doesn't have his Athens doghouse. He's got kind of a less glamorous portable carrier here. Make sure you got AC on him though. It's a little warm in here. Keep him comfortable. Let's get warm in this building. We'll see if that's a factor. You got a fan on him there on the left. Well, the players don't have fans, and stamina could, could be a factor in the oh. second half. It often is in this building. Not impressed by anything he's seen so far. <laughs> he's seen a lot. Strad on the move. Bootlegs back. And once again, finds Harrison and Marvin Harrison Jr. Tracked down from behind. They knocked the ball loose. The Georgia collect it. No. It bounced out of bounds. It was knocked out of his hands by Keely Ringo, but they couldn't collect it, and the Buckeyes move it inside the 15. Ryan Day, a good time to move the pocket, move that launch point. Again, this secondary struggling. They keep going after Lassiter, struggling against 18. He's trying to make a play and gives Starks a lot of credit with his effort. Also from behind, Ringo knocks it loose there. Ball's in play. Georgia has a chance. But the ball goes out of bounds. The Buckeyes continue to make plays in his pass game. Dumas Johnson tried to bat the ball back into play, but it was crowded over there. Couldn't quite do it. All their momentum heading right to the sideline. It was tough to stay in bounds. It's another fortunate break for Ohio State. First down from the 16. Delayed handoff and trying to bounce it is Hayden. He does make something of nothing and picks up about four before Munden got him down true freshman out of Memphis, Tennessee, went to Christian Brothers High School. Came in ready to play and ready to be involved. I don't know if he thought he'd be this involved. He had a big game against Maryland, but with the injury to Trevion Henderson, he brings much more sudden and quickness to that backfield. He really saved him against Maryland. Sure did. Yard game, a couple touchdowns. Yeah. One of those crucial red zone trips. They have spent a lot of time preparing for in the last month. Still eight on the play clock. And it's a design run. They don't do it often. Bulldogs were ready for it. Chaz Chambliss colliding with Stroud behind the line of scrimmage. Now that's discipline right there by Chambliss who has stepped in for Nolan Smith. Watch him right here. That, the, the scouting report did not say C.J. Stroud's going to run the zone read. Be ready for him. You never know down in the red zone. He doesn't do it. It's not something they show a lot, but the discipline there to be there just in case. Well done. Chambliss with a shake of the head. Uh -uh. It's not working tonight. So one of those four-point plays. Is it going to be a touchdown or a field goal attempt? They need six on third. Williams back in the game. Stroud has time, puts it to the end zone, high and over the head, but here comes a flag. And Mecca Buka was well covered. Georgia fans saying uncatchable, but that's a P.I. in the end zone. Looks like Bullard would be the guilty party. Pass interference. Defense number 22.
Automatic first down. Javon Bullard. Ohio State with a switch release. See the tight end work to the middle. They're trying to create some confusion on the back end. Bullard actually picks it up, but grabs him. And that's why you see the pass interference call. Did everything he was supposed to do. The ball was high, but grabbing onto that jersey brings the call. Moves the ball to the two yard line. Stroud is dialed in tonight. One of those performances. It's early, long way to go, but he was this way in the Rose Bowl against Utah. Picked him apart. Here comes big Jalen Carter in. Late substitutions for the Dogs defense. Williams. And Rossi in the backfield. Stroud to the pylon. Harrison diving attempt. Couldn't come up with it in front of Ringo. Second down. Yeah, those late substitutions. I think Jalen Carter wanted to be in, in the, on the field. Yeah, it was first and goal. He's trying to get out on the field. This is a play Ohio State ran a lot to Chris Olave the last few years, and now they're trying to get it to Harrison. There's the AT&T 5G pylon cam that gets destroyed. Hopefully it's okay. <laughs> I think Marvin believes he should have caught that one in his hand stretched out tough catch tough catch but an aggressive call on first and goal after the pass interference snaps the streak of seven straight completions for Stroud it's Rossi the fullback and a pair of tight ends in the game and they will take a timeout to think about this crucial second and goal play he doesn't think field goals are going to win it so important moments when you come back. Ohio State threatening off the timeout, second and goal. Had an interesting formation, and they had Josh Fryer, who's a backup tackle, wearing number 41. He's in the game down there, extra beef. Also have the backup tight end, Joe Royer. So they're going with size. But it would be just like Ryan Day to, to use that as a decoy to potentially use play action to get the right personnel in and, and then try to create a one-on-one -on -one matchup to the top with, uh, with his main guy Marvin Harrison because he's got it right now. Harrison's the only guy split wide. And they're going to hand the ball off inside Williams. Powering forward, drives the legs and scores for Ohio State. That has been missing in recent weeks. Mayan Williams with a physical run. But guys back on top. Yeah. Good job by Mitch Rossi as well with a heck of a block. But Chris, you're right. He stopped. And you've not seen that in Mayan Williams showing not only is he healthy, but you see the power that he brings to be able to get that into the end zone. Again, i got to reiterate how tough it is to run the football against his Georgia front. Just the sixth rushing touchdown allowed this season by Georgia. Ohio State takes it 75 and 11 plays. Chris, watch how physical this game is. Watch Rossi. I mean, you want to talk about a collision. Bang! Right there. He stopped. He is. He should be down. That's one of the top tacklers on his team. John Dumas Johnson, but doesn't go down. Keeps moving the legs and gets another touchdown on the board. A lot of pent-up frustration from Mayan Williams. Day. Says, forget the fancy stuff. We're going to line up and play power football against the Mighty Dogs defense. Holly? Well, guys, Mayan Williams made an important change before he ran in for that touchdown. He had taken a carry, but his feet were very spatted up. A lot of tape going under his cleats. He came to the sideline after that carry and had them cut everything off. He's only got one small piece of tape still going under the cleat. So the front of his cleats where that needs to grab the turf and the back are completely exposed. So he has more traction. Important change that Mayan Wade Williams made before he ran for that touchdown so he could get his cleats in the grass. Yeah, good stuff, Holly. It looked like he was, had some tape or some socks going all the way to his knees when he first came out there. It looked kind of constricted. Clearly helped him out. He ran in a different gear there. Meanwhile, Laura, what's going on to the Georgia sideline with Stetson Bennett? Something to watch, Chris, as Stetson Bennett went in the medical tent. Athletic trainers took his right shoe off, retaped that foot, and then he put the shoe back on. Then he's had a long layoff here on the sideline, has taken that right shoe off a couple of times. It doesn't seem to be too serious as you see him out there. He also just grabbed A.D. Mitchell and said, I'm coming to you for a touchdown. So watch that on this drive here. <laughs> Ali and Laura all over things on the sideline. We appreciate it. Teamwork. 
And it's been a long time for A.D. Mitchell to make impact plays. Already gotten involved tonight with a couple catches. McIntosh is the back. It's McConkey in motion. Bennett avoids the rush and delivers, but it's intercepted. He threw it right to Steel Chambers. And the first bad decision by Bennett tonight and the first takeaway of this game. But he would like to have rolled out to his right, but Jack Sawyer wouldn't allow it. If play action comes out this way, but watch the pressure force him to have to step up. And I think that surprised him, and he gets rid of the ball quickly on a wheel route that still Chambers covers perfectly. Look at 22. He's anticipating this throw to Kenny McIntosh. is right there, and a rare mistake by Stetson Bennett to throw it into coverage. Couldn't believe he did it. Seal Chambers, by the way, is from Roswell, Georgia. He's got 15 to 20 friends and family members tonight. So this is a this is a huge moment for him, and this is a concern for Georgia as Washington limping off the field. Stroud up seven, takes over at the plus 30. Pressure. He avoids it and delivers a strike along the sideline. Had to get away from the rush and found Fleming. Wow, Jalen Carter, many think will be the first pick in the draft because of these moves right here. And C.J. Stroud, it's the toughest thing you can do as a quarterback. Pressure up the middle, steps away, vision downfield. Fleming works back away from the coverage because his quarterback's in scramble mode. And he makes two guys make big time plays. Carter to get in and Stroud to avoid it. It was a matador. <laughs> Olay to the hyped recruit. And back in the red zone, Hayden. Takes the handoff and is hammered after a very short game. So Ohio State trying to cash in this turnover and build the lead confidence. Not a problem at the moment for this Ohio State offense. Ryan Day is a head coach and a play caller. Interesting what he's done. It feels like they've thrown, they've thrown, and they've thrown with Stroud, who's 9 of 11, but 10 runs. Not a ton of yards but enough to make Georgia have to think about it. So staying balanced with a play calling, and Jalen Carter goes off the field. Now they bring in the tailback Chip Trainum, who is a linebacker until a shift midseason. Stroud harassed. He escapes again, and it's in. No, go to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown, Harrison again. Stroud. Like a maestro escapes the sack and delivers a strike for the second time to his star receiver. Once again on a scramble, he looks for his guy. They work on this. C.J. Stroud, though, is doing things that he hasn't really shown in these big games, and that's creating with his legs and making plays when he gets pressure up the middle. We saw him get pressured by Jalen Carter, and this time it's Nazir Stackhouse that gets in there. 15 pounds of muscle added to the offseason to be stronger outside the pocket, right? More stable on the move. Absolutely. We just saw this before. This time the offensive line beat. Look at that. He sacked. Steps up. Now he's got to get to the outside, and great job by Marvin Harrison scrambling away with him to get away from Ringo for that touchdown. George is down 14. The college football playoff semifinal at the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. DoorDash, there's a neighborhood of good in every order. And Capital One, what's in your wallet? And the Buckeyes offense, the big guys up front there, touchdowns and back to back to back possessions. They cash in the Chambers pick with the short field. Two scores in about a minute and a half. And Georgia down by 14 for the first time this season. They trail by 13 at Missouri. Didn't take the lead until the last six or seven minutes, but always felt they were going to win it. This is a little different here yeah, in their it, backyard. Of course, it is, but it's a resilient team that, that has a veteran quarterback that always gives you confidence that you can settle down and, and try to reverse your fortunes uh, but it's just, you're right it's a motivated Ohio State team which we said in the open would it be good enough we don't know but you knew they'd come out here and, and play with a different kind of energy after the month-long agony that they had to deal with Jackson again wants this big sail over his head Curtis Wilson 
hanging out at home. The All-State bus is here. The All-State mayhem moment goes back to championship weekend, right? Yeah, the whole reason Ohio State is here, you've got to go back to the Pac-12 championship. USC 60 minutes away from advancing not only to a Pac-12 title, but to playoff. And Utah and Kyle Whittingham said no. They had big aspirations of winning that game. They pull off that upset, score a lot of points, play good defense, and they're headed to the Rose Bowl as Pac-12 champs in Ohio State into the playoff. Ryan Day said, what if, what if Caleb Williams doesn't hurt his hamstring against Utah? What if the Utes don't find that pass rush? They're not here playing Georgia. Edwards, bust free, second strong run, and he's out across the 45. Really good job here by the right side of the offensive line. Also a good block right here by your receiver, Arian Smith. Get a man on a man, hat on a hat, and then you give these backs that Georgia has just a little bit of running room. Hey, they can accelerate upfield in a hurry and rotating McIntosh and Edwards primarily in right now. McIntosh had the touchdown reception on the screen, but Edwards has run it three times for 41 yards. He's been the main ball carrier for the dogs tonight. And it's been a very pass heavy scheme for Georgia at this point. Pressure. Bennett trying to escape. He's got some space in the left directing traffic. Finally throws the ball very near the line of scrimmage. I think he was beyond it. Ryan Day's pointing and the flag is out. Yeah, he, he was across the line. Officials right away calling that out. Oh, the line of scrimmage at about the 46. He threw that almost around the 47 and a half yard line. I think Ty Hamilton was chasing him from his defensive tackle position. Not that, many flags so far. It's uh, it's the second illegal forward pass made beyond the line of scrimmage. Offense number 13. Awesome Five down. yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Lost it down. It's second down. You know, the black line is the line of scrimmage, and he's, he's got to be all the way across it with his whole body for it to be a penalty, and he was that time. Yeah. And the big thing is their loss of down. So when you're looking and at Cade Stoverkirk. Ohio State's fine tight end headed to the locker room to get checked out. That's that's a concern. We saw Darnell Washington go off. There he is, big tight end. Now he's going in and looking heavily. Now Stover. I mean Joe Royer, sophomore out of Cincinnati, elder, will probably get some more reps and have to step up. He has not been much of a pass catcher this year. It's been Stover as the weapon. Kendall Milton is the back. And it's going to launch downfield on the run. Caught. Arian Smith, the speedster, makes the catch down to the Buckeyes 10. Great deep ball by Bennett. But when, when you have a receiver like this that can get to the middle of the field, these linebackers with two deep safeties, he's got to run with that. He anticipates that he tries to get a head start, but you're talking about a track athlete. Great speed from Arian Smith, who easily is able to outrun the middle backer. Only his fourth catch. He had a deep shot against Tennessee early in the game. Fastest guy on the roster. And Georgia very quickly trying to strike back. Split your safeties. You're vulnerable down the middle. Backer's got to carry that. Milton makes a cut and bangs down near the goal line. Touchdown! He got in. How about that answer by Georgia? Forty seven yard play sets up the touchdown run. Let's make sure Milton got across the goal line here. What an effort. We saw Mayan Williams with an effort. Look at that. Extends at the end to me, Bill. It looks like he, and Bill says it is a touchdown. That's a tremendous job by Georgia and by Milton to answer that Ohio State lead. You just talked about that deficit. They go four plays, 75 yards in a minute 40. Bill Lamagne put his, his fingers about four inches apart. So that was that close. And then he gave the touchdown <laughs> sign. So I said, OK, that's good. That is a serious championship type response from the team that as of now wears the belt in college football and in the SEC. Well, good job by Oscar Delp. One of the tight ends we saw. Darnell Washington have to go out. They're going to take a peek at it. Watch four here. He just came into this game. They're trying to get to this edge of the Ohio State defense. Good job of sealing it. Gets up to the backer. Give all that space to the outside. Good speed by Milton, who has power as well. And 
he's able to get in there. Delp's about 50 pounds lighter than Washington. Doesn't quite strike fear in the defenders as a blocker the way the Big O does, but he did his job well there. Here's the AT 5G pylon cam. Let's watch the elbow and the football. Those are the two things in play here. Elbow down, but ball looks like it's across the plane, Bill. Bill, let's get you in here. What do yeah, you think? I got a touchdown on this. I mean, this is a tough call made by the officials and a great replay situation. This is what replay's for. That's right. We have a touchdown. Terry Layden, the replay official here for the Pac-12. They work with the CFP Command Central in Pittsburgh to offer support at times. After review, the ruling on the field stands as called. Touchdown. So Kendall Milton totes the rock for his seventh rushing touchdown this season. And uh, I, Ryan Day felt it was going to be a high scoring game. He felt it was going to take a lot of points to win this game. And it's unfolding the way he kind of thought. High scoring game and a back and forth kind of game. Just when you think you've got the momentum, there's a response and an answer. This Georgia team has the heart of a champion. One of the greatest things you can say about Kirby Smith and his team, no matter who they play, they play 60 minutes. They never take their foot off the gas, and they responded the way you'd expect them to there. One thing about these CFP games, they're long. A lot of stuff happens. Look at the first semifinal. Have you seen it over the years? Back and forth. You got to play the full 60, and sometimes then some. We got a ball game here, man. It's fun. We got a ball game. Seven point game. Semifinal. A lot of emotions for Ryan Day in the last month. He's been he's been fiery tonight. He has. You know, it's it's not very often you see Ryan Day with these kind of emotions, but the, the loss to Michigan, the, the scrutiny around the program and people questioning him. I think he's held back his emotion into this game. His quarterback is dialed in, making plays so far tonight, and look at this, his last touchdown. That's his reaction. I mean, I, I can't remember, cannot remember I've ever seen anything like that. And I think it tells you about that that pressure you're talking about. Meanwhile, on the other sideline, Kirby Smart's got to find a way, along with his defensive coordinator, Glenn Schumann, to affect C.J. Stroud. That was job one, and they have not done a good job so far. You know they're going to try to do everything they can to affect Ryan Day. And I think, Chris, the, the big thing is you got a quarterback that's hot and a play caller that's feeling it, right? I mean, the balance that he is playing with. And Ohio State, I think, has done a good job of mixing up, run with pass, trying to slow down and neutralize that defensive line. Jalen Carter, a lot of times, out of the game because he's fatigued. What you do? You got to you got to obviously contain Stroud and not let him get out of the pocket and keep blitzing those backers. And you go in saying don't let Marvin Harrison Jr. beat us. Well he's got five catches in the first half. He's been eating up Kamari Lasseter in coverage in particular. And they're moving him around and creating those matchups. And the end around of Buka bangs into heavy traffic and spins for four. Harrison already Kirk over 100 yards in those two touchdowns and he's not that hard to find on the field He's just been hard to cover and stop it, It's so different as far as his body type from his dad who's a Hall of Famer You know, I mean Marvin Harrison was so good right and his son is 6'4 205 pounds with that long torso and those long arms but has the twitch of his dad with his legs and feet Great point he's about four inches tall about 20 pounds bigger and a little stronger too. Across the middle, and that one's incomplete. That was intended for Harrison and Ringo, who says, I'll cover 18, let me have a go. Did a good job there. He's had some chances, and we just talked about Harrison. That ball is out in front of him, and if he was able to catch that football, it's, it's a first down. Stroud playing with such poise tonight, laser focus of finding the matchups. And along with Ryan Day, like I said, those two are feeling it. But Georgia trying to build momentum right here. Up the touchdown, trying to get off the field in third and seven. Here comes the noise. They rush four, and Stroud is gonna be harassed. Simulated pressure, and that's Williams who gets home. They show the backers and they drop one and bring the other, but it's up top, 13 against Paris Johnson. It's a true freshman, and Michael Williams at 6'5", 265. 
a really promising youngster off the edge of this Georgia defense. And finally, they're able to bring Stroud down and get that defense off the field. Second sack for the Dogs. Harris Jackson trying to create some field position, standing in his 35 to receive the punt of Murko, who goes up and collects the high snap, and the Aussie boots it away, and Jackson will wave for a fair catch with the coverage team bearing down on him at the 38-yard line. So Stetson Bennett and the Dogs get the football back. Trying to cut into this lead. The aquarium. Just a short walk from Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Aerial coverage brought to you, of course, by Goodyear. Road tested and game ready. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear more driven. Virtual road game for Ohio State. The Buckeyes certainly have been ready. They've been quieting the crowd with an offensive display in the first half. But Georgia now has momentum in the football at the 38. McIntosh is the deep setback. And he's got the football. And he's got a crease in the clear. McIntosh, one man to beat. Touchdown, guys. Double. Are you kidding me? The turf monster got him at the 10. Nobody in front of him made a great move to get clear and tripped on the turf. Watch the blocks right here by the left side of this offensive line. Just dominating up to the linebacker. And then there's the speed. Nobody there in the back end of this defense. Ronnie Hickman ends up taking a poor angle, and you're right. I mean, he looks back, and by looking back, he loses his balance. He walks into the end zone. What great execution up front. And like you said, you can feel the momentum favoring the dogs. Rumbling, bumbling, and ultimately stumbling. 52 yards sets him up. First and goal. Edwards has a... Nice gain off the left side, smashing down to the three. Interesting the way you see, if you're not familiar with Todd Monken, sticking with his guns, no panic at all in Georgia. Digged themselves a 14-point hole. Doesn't affect the approach, doesn't affect the play calling. Trust in the line, trust in the quarterback and the skill. They're close to tying this game up. It's second and goal. Bowers off to the right. McIntosh and the freshman Delp you talked about to the left here. It's McIntosh in motion. Bennett's going to run it. Can he get the edge? He walks in. Touchdown, Georgia. We both appreciate Todd Monk and his personality, but also his play design. It's just beautiful. It really is. Really good job. Like I said, I think the confidence that he has in his his offensive line and his quarterback allow him to stay calm. You know, he, doesn't, he doesn't panic. Oh boy, we're down 14. We we better come out of our plan and, and start to try to get back into it. So early in this game, and now an extra point, and they're at 21-21. What a well-designed play there. McIntosh still mad that he stumbled when he should have had a touchdown run, but it doesn't end up costing the dogs who scored two touchdowns in about three minutes here. Well, they've responded like a championship team. Showed no surprise, and we're even at 21. Big plays coming back to Georgia. Great job by that offensive line. Van Pran, the center up to Steel Chambers. Looks like Kenny McIntosh in the end zone, but <laughs> loses his balance. Looks over that right shoulder just to make sure, and Turk Monster gets it. Then we go to this touchdown. Watch the block here on the on the outside by Oscar Dell. Kind of seals the edge and allows the left tackle, Broderick Jones, to come around and lead the quarterback. Nobody left because of the formation, the motion to the right. Everybody on the defense is off to the right. Very easy. You seal the edge, you bring the tackle around, and Stetson Bennett's got great speed to get to the corner. We don't know why Georgia's become the benchmark program. Attention to detail. It's staggering how Kirby Smart prepares his team in backups. Delph has done very little all year. It's a tough assignment to replace Washington as a blocker. He's come in and done very well. That's a great point. 
those guys that are down the line into the defense this year. They did that all last year behind the Kobe Dean and company. Jackson, his first kickoff return tonight, fields a short one. Excuse me, Johnson, and he's going to be across the 20 to the 28 yard line. Holly? A developing situation for Ohio State's offense. Their great tight end, Cade Stover, with 35 receptions, is in the locker room. He was examined by athletic trainers on the sideline for a left upper hip or lower back injury. They would touch on his back, and he was wincing. He couldn't even bear the pressure of where they were pushing. There is an x-ray facility here on site. I will keep you posted when we know more, but it's a big deal right now. Not much depth at that position. Who can fill in so they can use the formations they want without Stover? He's such a valuable piece of the offense as a blocker and a receiver. Both teams dealing without excellent tight ends at the moment. So the Buckeyes, suddenly it's dead even again. Stroud trying to rediscover the rhythm. And catch is made across by Joe Royer, who's filling in for Stover. Yeah, I know a lot about Joe Royer because he's a great high school player in Southwest Ohio. Like I said, Cincinnati Elder, one of the great high school programs in the country. And he was a dynamic player in high school. So it's not as if... You're bringing in a backup tight end that doesn't know how to, run, how to run routes. In fact, he's probably known more for his ability to run routes and come in and learn to be a blocker. Now, Mitch Rossi, 34, on the other hand, he's a plugger. He's looking to try to open holes up. Warrior can do it, but that's just his second catch of the season. Stroud on the move, pump fakes, and delivers a low throw incomplete to Nabuka. So it's third and one. An inverted wish, inverted wishbone there, like a diamond formation from the uh, the gun. Did not fool Georgia at all. This isn't easy. You get the third and one. This is a tough play call against Georgia. Tough play call, tough yard to make. It is. It's loud again. Hayden is the back. Chanley Carter right here in the middle. And they test the middle. I don't know. Hayden slammed in there. They're going to spot him short. I believe it's going to be fourth down and inches here. Does Ryan Day dare gamble here in his own end? This could be really close. He says fourth down. C.J. Stroud saying first down. The referee says nope. Fist up. Fourth down. Like you. A few inches away. Offense on the field. He said he's going to be aggressive. I don't know how many times he told us, I'm going to be aggressive. We're going to throw it up. We're going to do what we got to do. Boy, this is, you go for this. This is super aggressive in your own 35. Will they run a play or try to get him offside? A lot of time on the clock. Ryan Day's walking right to the line of scrimmage. It's like he's going to call a timeout. Georgia is too disciplined to jump. And we'll see after this timeout if he's in a gambling mood here for 28 before halftime in his own end. You see Nolan Smith there, number four with the specs on him. He's their best pass rusher. And they lost him for the season, a peck injury in the Florida game. He's become an assistant coach, always a great leader, but awesome to see the job he's done since being out for the year. It really is. And, and, and he loves his school, and he wants them to win. He wants to contribute. Look at him talking to guys. He's the Nicobe Dean of this defense. It was such a big loss to take him out of this lineup, not just because of the sacks, but the, look at the personality that he brings. He works with the defense. He's coaching all the positions. He, he was over there with the kickers in practices. Are you, are you trying to coach the kickers too? No, he said, what, no part of that. <laughs> we do not want to coach the kickers. <laughs> but it, it just you love the attitude. Oh, and that's, yeah. that's part of this program too. A reliable guy who just can't contribute as a player but still finds ways. Offense still out there. Ho, ho, ho. Now, does he go shotgun or does he get under center with a back behind him and just push him for the first down? Big Jalen Carter right across from center, Luke Whippler. Well, you don't want to run at 88, right? He's right here. Rossi in motion. Stroud's going to try to make it around the edge. A flag is down. I don't know if they were set there. It's going to be I, illegal motion. I, I think, think Rossi moved towards the line of scrimmage before the ball was snapped. He was in motion, and I think he moved towards the, the, the line before the ball was snapped. Illegal motion. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Replay fourth 
Well, we got a chance to see that Day was putting his money where his mouth is. He was going to gamble. They were going to make it if not for the penalty easily. Oh, what a call. I mean, they seal the edge. There he is. And he see how he gets going forward? Bill, it looked like he jumped That's the gun. That's a correct call. He's moving forward prior to the snap, at the snap. That's illegal motion. What a play call, by the way. Everybody's oh. thinking, is he going to try to go up the middle? He gets to the edge and easily has it. Now those small things, a little bit of a mistake. And now Mirko's punt taken by Jackson on his knees. So instead of the conversion in his own territory on fourth and one and a drive to potentially reclaim the lead, now Georgia's got the football. 4-12 to go. And we see a Bulldog in that punt return team who's down. Looks like Chambliss. We use a lot of starters and key players on special teams. What a first half here. I mean, back and forth, momentum shifts between these two heavyweights. Unbelievable. I mean, you knew coming into this game the potential of both these teams. Ohio State came out. Boy, their offense was clicking, doing everything you'd expect them to do if C.J. Stroud had time. But it was really his creativity, right? But Georgia shows you why they're the defending champs. Back-to-back -back drives. They put points on the board. And now, look at these last four minutes and 12 seconds to go. With Georgia's momentum, they're thinking putting points on the board. They do get the ball to start the second half as well. So they're looking to get a, a two for one here. So Marvin Harrison, the superstar for Ohio State, he's been featured. Bennett has been spreading the ball around to lots of different receivers and running backs, shaking off the mistake that he made, the interception. There's the at and countdown to the CFP National Championship. A wild game, 96-point score. TCU had a pair of pick sixes against J.J. McCarthy, who struggled but also created a lot of big plays. And Quentin Johnson had a monster game. Yeah, he's known really for his ability to get downfield, but a lot of yards after the catch today. And Sonny Dykes at TCU out to prove everybody wrong against Michigan, and they do. First win for the Big 12 in the playoff, and Chambliss being helped off the field. Again, you put starters on special teams, and that's the risk. He's a guy who plays the jack position, linebacker. He's helped off the field. We just showed all Nolan Smith. And How about the third quarter? 44 points scored. I, mean, there were, I think there were four touchdowns scored in about five minutes, a total of six in that quarter. I left to come out here on the field before the game, and I thought the game was pretty much in hand, and Michigan got it within, what, five there at yep. the end? To the dogs. With plenty of time, too. As you said, trying to claim the lead here before halftime and then get the football to begin the third quarter. McIntosh in the delay breaks an initial tackle and is dragged down by Ransom after picking up about four. They've been able to run the football. Unbelievable, over 100 yards already controlling things. I know Ohio State trying to make adjustments. With tempo, Bennett launching downfield and it's broken up beautifully. That was Cameron Brown who had a very tough game in the loss to Michigan, stepping in front of Mitchell. Nice job there. A little bit of confusion there by Ohio State secondary, but they get aligned. And Cam Brown, the last second, because he has eyes on the football, he's able to get that left hand. See his eyes? Locates the ball and then times it up to knock it away. Now the Buckeyes defense, a chance for a, a third down stop to get the football back before the break. Dogs need six. Just the third, third down play for Georgia tonight so far. Play clock at three. And it has time. Delivers over the middle. Strike. First down. Close me, Jack Saint. Rolling down inside the 35, found some space in that zone, and Bennett delivered a dart. Yeah, they bring Hickman down here. Look how tight this window is to be able to throw this into the middle. Buckeyes expecting a crosser. They're there, but a good job of making the throw. And Rosamy Jack Saint coming back downhill to the football helps convert there. 28-yard gain on that third and six. Tight window and a great throw by Stetson Bennett. Only three incompletions. One of them, of course, was the interception, but 11 for 14 for Stetson in this first half. It's Mitchell in motion. They hand it off inside to Milton. Milton banging down inside the 20 before Chambers stopped him. The defensive line overran the play. Looked like Tyleek Williams, 91. Watch him kind of run himself out of the play. Great recognition by the left tackle, Broderick Jones, to look to his left to kind of get a kickout block. And it's slight hesitation. 
by Milton just when he got the ball. Good patience to find that crease. Todd Munkin, as he often does, passing to set up the run, but now that ground game is churning. 124 yards for Georgia. Ohio State's run for 10 in this first half. Milton again. It's on heavy traffic. And short gain. One of the Cage few, and Chambers stopped him again. One of the few times we see Ohio State's defense line getting off of blocks, and it was Jerron Page. And Georgia can run the football. And look at all these yards before contact. You allowed them to get downhill. You make those linebackers and safeties have to get caught up in that run game. You're playing right into the hands of any offense, but especially Todd Monken and what he likes to do with Stetson Bennett, the play-action game. Bowers motions in on second and ten. Bennett flips it down and is incomplete. Edwards got a hand on it but couldn't collect it. He's not as natural a pass catcher as McIntosh is. And I think good coverage there by Ohio State. Jim Knowles, whose defense the last time against Michigan, those last two big long runs that are playing really tight to the line of scrimmage tonight, playing a little softer, willing to give up some yards, and then trying to squeeze things down in the red zone like this. Can Bennett create again on third and long? He's done a couple of times tonight. McIntosh to his left. Here comes the blitz. Bennett backpedals and flips it short. And it's catch made for the first time tonight by Lad McConkey, who's fighting through some knee pain, but Denzel Burke stopped him short of the marker in his fourth down. Well, I, I really thought they would try to get the ball downfield to Brock Bowers right here. But a really good job of staying with coverage there with Lathan Ransom downfield. Now it's Kirby Smart's turn to go for it on fourth down. They need a full four yards and electing at least at this point not to kick a field goal to take the lead. Hmm. <laughs> oh, coach is thinking we need touchdowns not field goals. Yeah let's go back. I thought they try to get it here but pretty good coverage by Ransom Chris. And then on the outside you see McConkie just settle there and the big thing is can you tackle these receivers in tight ends after they make receptions. Denzel Burke comes up and keeps him short of the first down. McConkie's a guy that caught 51 balls, tweaked his knee against LSU here. He's been battling tendonitis all year and a bone bruise and an MCL. He gave him some medication pregame. Kirby Smart wasn't sure how much they could get out of him. Yeah. He, but he's, that's a big guy not to have in there contributing. He's, he, he's been the go to guy. Even last year, he made so many big plays. Like you said, showing a lot of guts this year, playing through a lot of pain. Now that offense is still out there. Delp along with Bowers. Brock had kind of a quiet first half by his standard. Just the one catch for 19 yards. The guys had touchdown receptions in each of the two playoff games last year for Georgia and each of the two SEC games that he's played in. Real quick huddle, a little quicker like a sugar huddle. There's Bowers there in motion. Got to get to the 10. Late clock down. I think this was a bluff. Yeah, they were just trying to get. Ohio State to jump offside and give him a cheap first down and it, 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 it doesn't add up to, to go for it there and not take the field goal. I'm sorry. <laughs> well you've scored 14 unanswered. Like to try to take the lead here. Mercedes Benz halftime report is coming up. Reese Davis Desmond Howard is Desmond doing OK. We'll check on him. David Pollock watching the game with uh, keen eyes as always. Highlights from that wild Verbo Fiesta Bowl won by the Horned Frogs this afternoon. And Alabama got a win earlier today against Kansas State. Bryce Young and Will Anderson electing to come back and play in their final game for the Crimson Ball Tide and rewarded with a, a great win. With Bama young receivers that were inexperienced all year. Boy, they, they arrived today. Yeah, they called Jackpot, missed earlier from 47. This from 32 for the first lead of the game for Georgia. And this one inside that left upright. So they were down 14, and now they're up three, a minute 44 before the break. Certainly no response to see Stetson Bennett and Georgia respond. It was the interception by Steel Chambers 
Bennett made that mistake. He was frustrated. Buckeyes cashed it in. Georgia down 14, just totally unfazed. And now a 17-point run to take the lead. Yeah, you got a minute 44 to go, like we said the last time, that Georgia does get the ball to start the second half. And, you know, Ryan Day is going to be aggressive, and it, he's got a quarterback that's got a hot hand. It's really going to come down here is can you take care of your quarterback, and can Georgia apply pressure? Because these last couple times Ohio State's had the ball, not the same rhythm. And you even said at a break one time, what, do you, what can Georgia do to kind of disrupt the flow and the rhythm of what they're doing? The last two times out, they've done a much better job of applying pressure and containing him. And a bad sign for the Buckeyes, the Bulldogs have begun to get that running game cranked up. So it was Bennett pitching it around early, but now, as they so often do, Georgia's starting to flex up front. They throw those body shots, and they're an excellent second-half running team. It, it, it becomes serious wear and tear in their opponent's defense. Let's see what Stroud can do with the Buck 44. They've used up all their timeouts, so they don't have that to help the cause here. This Wednesday, the first NBA Wednesday doubleheader. Giannis and the Bucks go to Toronto to take on the Raptors at 10 o'clock. LeBron and the Lakers hosting Jimmy Butler and the struggling Miami Heat. NBA countdown kicks things off on ESPN and on the app. Remember, Marvin Harrison got off to such a big start early in this game. Five receptions and 106 yards and a couple scores. I'm sure they'll try to dial him up. They've got him isolated right now at the top with the three receivers at the bottom. Lasseter covering him. Back-to-back -back three and outs for Ohio State after three consecutive touchdown drives. They flip it short on the screen. Johnson, the old hand in that receiving room, works across the 30. Williams knocked him down. A little tempo for Ohio State. Clean pocket across the middle. Nabuka in full stride there. Accurate delivery on the run, and suddenly Ohio State's at midfield. And the ball's getting out much quicker. Abuka matched up there in a mismatch against Siobhan Bullard, who's a, a good player, but matched up one-on-one -on -one with space. Abuka's going to win that, especially when the ball gets out that quickly, and he gets separation. His fourth catch of the first half. Stroud steps up and delivers. That's Julian Fleming. And the big physical receiver down to the 36 before Ringo tackles yeah, him. Beats Ringo to the inside. Good job at the stem of the route. Faking, kind of giving that outside look, and then back to the inside. Second time in a row, they're working the middle. Stroud has rediscovered that rhythm. Flips it right down the middle. It's Johnson who's got it. Spinning to the end zone. Touchdown, Ohio State, as they reclaim the lead. Third touchdown for Stroud in the half. Covered 37 yards. I'd say they got back to the rhythm pretty quickly. Wow. Keep talking about what an answer. They snuck him right out of the backfield, cleared it out. He's a graduate. He, he's done everything. He's a great special teamer. He's played a little running back in an emergency. He's a wide receiver. And he, I had a feeling he was going to have an impact tonight. You're right. Jack of all trades. Receiver, running back, special teams. A big playmaker in that case. 75 yards in 55 seconds. Uh, they're concerned about the receivers, so they have two safeties back here, right? Well, look in the middle. The matchup that Ohio State creates here with Xavier Johnson. It's exactly what they want. One-on-one -on -one against the middle linebacker. And instead of just kind of pulling up underneath, he goes right by Javon Dumas Johnson. And how about that layered throw? Just kind of a soft touch. Knew the safety is, had split, and he knew that he had separation to be able to get the ball to Johnson behind that middle backer. We talked about Stetson Bennett on the Georgia side. Johnson was an ex-walk-on. He finally got a scholarship last year. And in the portal era, he just hung around and showed loyalty, and here he is in the semifinal catching a touchdown pass. Yeah. One of the, the players' favorites just because of that unselfish attitude. Love to see guys that are willing to be special teams guys. There he is. He's covering a kick. That's been his job most of his career. <laughs> and now rewarded this year and especially on this stage. Heck of a play by 10. Well, well, Georgia thought they could add the lead before the break. Ohio State got a stop, and Stroud took him just four plays to reclaim the lead. And now the dogs have a couple timeouts in 49 seconds. And who knows? Todd Munkin looks like feeling aggressive. That's Bennett, right? The way they're moving the ball with two timeouts. 
We got what about uh, two hours left in the year. Oh my in gosh, I forgot. Times Square, Year's New Eve. York City. Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve with Ryan Seacrest. A few raindrops falling. That will not dampen the look party in New York. Boy, they're good. You ever do that? I mean, you live in New York. That looks like something you'd enjoy. A long time ago when Did I was you? much younger. <laughs> I was long. kidding. Dude, I've been working on New Year's Eve. Yeah, I've noticed I, the last exactly. 30 years. Well, that's true. I've been with you. I get it. But you did. You've I, done I, that I before. I did that when I was very young. Yeah. Why? Just one and done. Why? I didn't do it once. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what uh, what Bennett can do here with the time remaining and a couple timeouts. He made a lot of big plays downfield, but Tui Molo said, uh-uh. Jumped in there and batted it away. Bennett for a guy who's maybe 5'10", doesn't get a lot of passes batted down. Uh, tu, tu, Tui Molowau at 6'4", and a great basketball player in his day, says, uh-uh-uh. Good recognition, knew the ball was coming out, times it up perfectly. This guy that was a vocal leader, and it's not necessarily his nature, but after the loss to Michigan, it was this guy right here who got the energy back in the practice field and got the players to believe they were practicing for a purpose. He didn't know they were going to play in the playoff at that point, but he was a key guy in keeping the energy high. Bennett pulls the ball down and delivers into traffic. Tried to find McConkey, broken up and almost picked off by Cameron Brown. Well, he wanted to go to his left out to Brock Bowers, but for whatever reason came off of that and quickly came back to the middle. And once he came into the middle, he throws it into traffic. And Cam Brown almost comes away with a monumental turn of events. Late, see, looks left, looks left. Bowers, nope. Then he quickly just re-engages back to McConkie into the teeth of that defense. Risky throw, got away with one. And now Munkin and Smart have seen enough. And in third and ten with Ohio State out of timeouts. They'll just take a knee. Kirby out there to have a, a word with his quarterback. That was very nearly a crucial mistake before halftime, as it is a terrific first half. Bulldogs will get the ball to begin the third quarter, but they'll have to come from behind. Ohio State up 28-24. And Ryan Day's team will go to the locker room with the lead. Let's go to Holly. Coach, four plays, 55 seconds. How did you execute that to perfection in that moment? Uh, we worked on it uh, for a long time. That was a two-minute drill that we worked a lot on. You know, CJ and X did a great job executing that one right there. That was a coverage we thought we'd get, and they had to put it on the field. So, uh, a lot of football left here, but that's the, that's what we expected to play like that in the first half. Now we got to do it in the second half and go beat them. Thanks, Coach. Right. Laura, let's go to you with Kirby Smart. Thanks, Holly. Coach, you just pulled Stetson Bennett aside and had some words with him. What did you say to him? Just settle down. You know, we tried to show him some aggression, show him maturity, let him go on second down and try to throw the ball, and he held the ball a long time and threw it high over the middle. So, we're going to need him to win it, so he's got to be able to throw it and catch it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Well, Bennett and Stroud, more than 400 passing yards combined. Stroud with those three first-half touchdown passes to DeMarvin Harrison, Jr. And the underdogs from Columbus up four in the Bulldogs' backyard. The Mercedes-Benz Halftime Report coming up right after these messages. It's the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl on ESPN. Welcome back as Mercedes-Benz prepares to take electric by storm. There's been some really fireworks indoors. Mercedes-Benz Stadium is in the first half. Welcome back to the CFP semifinal at the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Ohio State with a four-point lead. Two touchdown receptions for that man, Marvin Harrison Jr. Two of the three 
thrown by C.J. Stroud. Dogs will get the ball to begin the second half, Kirk. But, uh, wow, I mean, what an incredible first half. Ryan Day thought it might take 45 or 50 to win it. We kind of smiled. Yeah, right. They're on pace for it. I, yeah, both these teams aren't has that field. Who has the ball last? Might be the team that ends up winning this game. C.J. Stroud does such a good job, especially early in this game. Look at it pointing. Actually moves Marvin Harrison from the left to the right in that direction. Gives him an assist for this touchdown. The mobility, the ability to keep a play alive again to Harrison for that touchdown. So C.J. Stroud, Ryan Day, great first half and a good job by Georgia of responding and getting back into this game after down 14. It's the Capital One rewarding performance. Well, Day's offense has been made one-dimensional by the Dogs' defense. The Buckeyes have gained 30 rushing. You take out the 20 sack yards, net 10. That's the lowest in six years for a first half for Ohio State. In my own mind, I, I kind of set an over-under at 60 yards against his Georgia defense. I mean, they're number one in the nation consistently in, in defending the run. And I knew Ohio State had a pretty decisive advantage with Stroud and Harrison and company and throwing the ball against his secondary. If he has time, he's going to make plays. Dogs, much more balance on offense. Jackson from the one, tries to get the edge, and Pierre's Jackson is going to be knocked down near the 30. Laura? Well, Chris, as George is going to get the ball right here, Kirby Smart's message at halftime was they have to be more physical. He wants more physicality at the line of scrimmage, and then when we do see the defense back out there, he said they got to get more pass rush. He wants to affect C.J. Stroud, as he's told us so many times. The final message to the team is they were running out, win the fourth quarter. That's always his message. Also, they will be without tight end Darnell Washington. He just came out on crutches. It's a left ankle injury, and he's in a boot. He was tearful. That's tough. He's had a hard time staying healthy in his career. And the big O is out. We've seen Oscar Delft, the true freshman, step in. Kenny McIntosh, you scored a touchdown on a screen pass in the first half. Here's the carry, but nothing doing in the middle. Steel Chambers has been active, filling from a linebacker spot. Yeah, you know, at, at times they've sat back. Here's a look at Darnell Washington. Hate to see anybody get hurt, especially a, a, a great player like Washington. But Ohio State, a lot of times in the first half against this run where they gave up a lot of yards, 127 on the, on the ground, sat back. Those backers were back, being a little cautious, being a little careful. Same with the safeties, and they were able to crease Ohio State's defense. First play to start the second half. I don't know if it's an adjustment we'll watch throughout, but Eichenberger and Chambers right at the snap of the ball, flying downhill to try to help out. They have not been terribly aggressive with the blitz. Only blitz Bennett four times in the first half. One of those, he did throw the interception. Now he takes a downfield shot. It's over the head of Bowers, who is running behind Lathan Ransom, but the throw to the loft target. Yeah, what a matchup. You, you just had that feeling. We were talking at halftime. When's he going to get the ball more to Bowers? He has one catch tonight. The thing that stands out is there's not one guy for Georgia that's making a lot of plays. And here they try to get the ball to Bowers. Decent coverage there by by Lathan Ransom, but he's thrown the ball to 10 different receivers. So while Ohio State's getting into Abeka and Harrison, Stetson Bennett is spreading the ball all over the field. And just the one catch for Bowers. That one was on Bennett. He had the tight end open there. Now it's third and six. Three-man rush. Bennett all kinds of time, but it's batted down to the line of scrimmage. Getting the big hand up was Tyleek Williams, and it's fourth down. Changing looks up. This time just rushing three. Ohio State's defense spread all over the field. There was an opening there in the middle. Chambers might have been able to make a play on this. They take everything away on the outside. And there's that big left hand by Tyleek Williams. Georgia doesn't go three and out off it, but the first possession of the second half, Buckeyes get off the field right away and get the ball back to Stroud. Haven't seen a lot of third downs tonight. It's a high short punt. Abuka waves for a fair catch at the 29. Holly, what do you have? Well, guys, a developing story here for Ohio State. Kate Stover, their terrific tight end, has been taken to a local hospital. Grady Memorial Hospital is about two miles away. They knew that he was having back spasms, a lower left back injury, but they wanted to be careful. They knew he couldn't return to this game, so they have taken him to the hospital. C.J. Stroud, before he left the field, looked at him and said, Brother, no matter what happens, I love you and I've got you. But it must be significant because Cade Stover is one of the toughest guys on this team. He's been farming in about six degree weather, birthing calves. If he's in pain, it's something significant. He's the toughest kid on the team. 
totally right, Holly. I was just thinking that if he can't go, then it's serious pain. It takes a lot to keep Stover out, but they have to do without their tight end. Now Stroud, deep drop, looking downfield, launches for Fleming, who comes back to the football. He was underthrown, but he collects it at the 45 in front of Ringo. Boy, what a good job by the pass protection up front. Mitch Rossi's in there to help out. He's here. He works up and all the way across. Then you move that pocket, get away from the pressure, gets just enough time, and look in the background there, the job that Fleming does and at the end, being able to get separation, and really, Stroud throws him away from that coverage. Good, well-placed football. Worked out good. It looks like he tried to muscle the ball, and it came out kind of unorthodox there, but it worked. Xavier Johnson, the all-purpose back, deep in the backfield to take a handoff, and the diminutive guy muscles for about eight. It's a small dude to be running into that heavy traffic. Comes up limping. Tresman Marshall in there for Munden. And that's who missed a tackle. And Georgia had good gap integrity there, but a cutback right, really right at the line of scrimmage. That time where he was able to make a big play, positive yards on first and 10. Three receivers stacked to the right. Stroud looking to launch again, and it's Abuka again inside the 20. Another accurate downfield throw by the quarterback. Again, man, I know we're going to get caught up in Stroud, and we should, but look at the protection. Look at this protection for C.J. Stroud. And if they don't get to C.J. Stroud, it's a mismatch on the back end with these receivers against the Georgia secondary. Their only chance of stopping him is they got to get to him. Picked up 19, Ohio State back in the red zone. Where they've been super efficient trying to add to this lead. Another nice first down gain by Johnson. They'll take that any day against this stout defense. And that zone read look froze the, the in man in line of scrimmage, Michael Williams, and it allowed Paris Johnson, a left tackle, to get up to the backer. Again, as you said, positive yards on first and 10. You gotta respect what Ryan Day is doing. It's body blows with his running game. We just showed you and talked about, Chris, how, what do you say, 10 yards at one point trying to run the football and start this second half? But some positive first and 10 runs. He's not completely abandoning the run game. Just not the guy you'd expect to be the leading ball carrier at this point. It's Johnson again. Hammers forward. He's not as small as I made him say. He's 200 pounds. He's solidly built, but he's not Mayan Williams out there. No, you're right about that. He, and he, like we said, he does so many different things. Jalen Carter in some of these runs, you see him on the sideline. They're trying to rotate bodies, trying to stay fresh. You mentioned the heat in this indoor facility, a little bit more than your, your, your average dome. Second half, you start to get tired up front. On third and two, play action flips wide open. Abuka, touchdown Ohio State! What a start to the third quarter for the Buckeyes. Get the three and out stop, and they take it 70 in six plays. And they Double put, digit lead. Yeah. Chris, they've got a lot of pressure here, and here comes the motion, right? Anytime you motion that from the back side, he's, a lot of times he'll get lost in coverage. Nobody follows him over in man coverage. Nobody in the flat on the play side. And an easy touchdown again for this Ohio State offense. Beautiful play design on both sides, and credit. Ryan Day for coming up with that one to get his receiver in open space. And Ohio State back on top by double digits here. Stroud with four touchdowns tonight, only four incompletions. To Mississippi State playing with heavy hearts trying to honor Mike Leach visiting Illinois via Quest Bowl. She's at Citrus Bowl, LSU at Purdue, another SEC Big Ten matchup. Big swings of momentum. Ohio State had a 14-point run to go up 21-7.
UGA 17 in a row to reclaim the lead. Now the Buckeyes, a couple touchdowns here to get back to an 11 point margin. Let's take a look at ESPN sync all three of these in real time. See the quarterback, see the touchdown, and you see the reaction from Ryan Day. Somebody is feeling it down in the middle as the head coach and the quarterback. You and I were talking at the break. It's interesting to look at the facial expressions of the Ohio State sideline, a team that's been much maligned and criticized, even by their own fan base, about the loss to Michigan at home to potentially cost them a Big Ten champion. Well, it did cost them a Big Ten, but a shot at the playoff. They end up getting in. Dealt with a lot. You can see they're kind of letting that out tonight. You can see Dave seeming to motion. Keep going. Keep. We got to oh, keep yeah. playing against Georgia. McIntosh bangs forward for 10. Holly. You know who else is celebrating on this Ohio State sideline is the offensive line. Justin Fry, the O-line coach, just had a great moment with his club where they all were yelling, "Woo!" snapping their fingers, getting so excited. They feel like they're doing work up there. He's reminding them of their te technique, making sure they keep their second steps going in the right direction. But really good stuff from this offensive line. They feel like they're doing their job down here. Because I think the only one celebrating really and showing emotions, Ryan Day. There's the Orlando Pace, big O. Everybody else seems to be more stoic and businesslike. Orlando likes what he sees. That offensive <laughs> yeah. line, little wounded pride against Michigan, and the challenge of playing this incredibly talented, deep Georgia front. Luke Whipler said, I, I love a challenge. I mean, that, that's what we live for. And you get one on paper tonight, but they're holding their own, and then some. They sure are. A great job on Jalen Carter up front. Now he, had, he has one tackle. There's the big center, Whipler, who leader in the middle as far as communication. So Georgia will still be filled with a lot of belief, no panic at all, but there's an unease when you have a hard time stopping the other team's offense, and Kirby Smart definitely feeling that right now. And so does the Dogs offense, Kirk. They, they know this is not a typical game. They don't get in a lot of shootouts because teams don't put 35 on them, and Two quarters and six minutes. No, and, and you think about even Tennessee, they came in with that high profile offense, and I think a lot of people thought potentially a shootout in that game, but it was the Georgia defense. Again, that was in Athens. They they cut, dominated the line of scrimmage with Ryan Day's play calling and keeping Georgia off balance. They've not been able to win the line of scrimmage, and because of that, Stroud and the receivers have had a big night. Need seven. Bennett, four straight incompletions. Steps up against the four-man rush, pumps again, and it's incomplete. He was pressured heavy by Tui Molowal, and the Buckeyes defense jumping around. They get off the field again. So is this a well, ball clearly blown well, dead? It was a scrum after the play. Chambers has got the football, claiming that it was a fumble, not an incompletion. Lee, yeah. It's fourth down. Yeah, that was the signal initially, but the players couldn't hear the whistle. Right, right. Interesting reaction. Look at the coverage here. I mean, look, look downfield. They rush four. They're playing zone. Playing zone. He's got some openings in the middle, but the pressure, the combination of the coverage and the pressure there eventually gets to him. That ball is out before ball is thrown. For, I mean, hands coming forward before the ball comes out. You wonder, would they blitz him a little bit more? They did bring some pressure and get to him there. It's been effective against Bennett when they've done it. Kind of a simulated pressure. Buka drifts back and makes a fair catch way back at the 15. That's a good punt by Thorson, but Stroud back to work up 11. 52 yards on the boot. The college football playoff semifinal at the Chick fil A Peach Bowl is brought to you by AT&T 5G. Too much college football is never too much. And Modelo, brewed for those with a fighting spirit. It was the Dogs night in Indy, their first national championship, ending a 41-year drought. Sets them better, the outstanding player of that game. But if they're going to get back and defend this trophy, presented by Dr. Pepper, awarded a week from Monday in LA. They got some work to do here in the semifinals. It starts with this defense right here. Stroud's been on fire. Seven for his last seven. 
couple touchdowns included. Three of his four scores have been outside the pocket. Moving that very that launch point. Been in the pocket, been moving around, some drop back, some play action, combination of things. You see that stat, you think, oh boy, number 18's due for a, an opportunity. Should train him as the back, but it's Sabuka on the end around trying to get to the edge, and he is hammered down hard. Christopher Smith, the safety, came up and introduced himself. Wonder, with Georgia's defense, they, they've mixed up coverage, they played some zone, played a lot of man, but when they have blitzed and played man, my goodness, it's not gone well for Kirby. Look at Stroud's numbers tonight. He's 16 to 20, 284 and four against man coverage. You know, 16 with his 18 completions, Kirk, when the receiver is either open or wide open, which is more than five yards for the defender right. and the receiver gap. That, that's unusual for Georgia's coverage. Backside pressure, they've got him. And that was Bullard coming on the blitz. Third sack. You've been with Cage Sober out, Mitch Rossi in. You wonder if he should have recognized that blitz and picked that up. He released, right? And I don't know. I don't know what the, the, the protection was. But he, he released to the outside right here, and the pressure came right there. It's either that or the back. Trainum's got to recognize that. But C.J. Stroud's a veteran guy. He sees that blitz, and he knows he's got somebody that's going to pick it up. Dogs crowd bringing the noise now in third and 12. Play clock at five. And now a pre-snap flag. Illegal substitution. Half the distance to the goal, it's still third down. Ohio State's really executed well. Which a virtual road game, they have not had a lot of those pre-snap penalties. They've been very sharp. That sets him back even more. Watch the coaches trying to help out, saying, hey, man, you can't be in there. we got to get you out. But it was already too late at that point. Too many men and way too many coaches on the field. <laughs> I thought he was going out in the field. If you count the coaches, they had about 16 guys out there. It's a big play. Stroud in his end zone. Protection holds up, delivers down the field. Harrison just over the big man's hands. And well covered by Georgia, but that was the big play Harrison's been looking for since that active first quarter. Watch him work to the middle with the safeties going wide. He wants to work around the coverage and then get into that hole, but the ball just a little bit too high before he could make a play on it. Sisavon in coverage there. He was affected there, the pressure just Absolutely. enough. And a great shot by Georgia to get off the field on that third down deep in Ohio State territory. Mirko with his heels near the back line. Boots a low punt, but it's pretty good. And Garris Jackson driven back to his 45, but he's got some space. Jackson breaks a tackle, makes a cut, and Georgia's going to be set up at the Ohio State 32, trying to chop into this lead. Well, that's what they needed. Good job by special teams. Put Ohio State deep in their own territory to, to start a drive, and Georgia needed a service break in this kind of game. And they got help from the, the special teams. The defense does their job, and then special teams again with a big boost to give them great field position yeah, here. The, the low punt was 50, but he outkicked the coverage. A 22-yard return for Jackson. You can see Bennett's reaction. He knows the importance of this moment. It's the team that's already put 35 on the board. Edwards dragged down after a kind of two-yard gain in the middle of that pile there. Where is Brock Bowers, right? Where, at what point do they try to get him isolated? We'll talk receivers, there's A.D. Mitchell, there's Ladd McConkey, five and 84. Rosamie, Jack Saint, one. But Brock Bowers is the guy who they always go to and the difference maker. Just has the one reception tonight, has three targets. shifts over to the left and now motions back to the right and it's a handoff but again a clogged middle Eichenberg 
comes up to knock Edwards down. It's third down. You know, sometimes as a defense alignment, you, you, you don't necessarily make a play, but you hold up enough against a double team that allows the backer not to be impacted by that double team, and he was able to work around it. So give an assist there to the big man up front to eat up that double team and free up the linebacker, the number one tackler, 35, Eichenberg. So Bennett desperate to rediscover his rhythm. Five straight incompletions. McIntosh in the backfield on third and seven. Bennett dropped behind the line. They gave a simulated pressure look, only rushed four, and he hesitated, couldn't find anybody open. Well, what a job here by Javante Zambaptiste on the left side. Hadn't played a lot tonight, but he comes in on third down, has great length, 6'5", 250. He's played a lot of football. They got pressure from the middle. Number nine there, Zach Harrison gets pressure on the opposite side, but that pocket collapses on Bennett. But Lesney, right near his career long from 52 yards, it's within his range. He's missed a long one earlier, made a chip shot, and this to make it a one possession game. Drives this, and no! Slides it wide right this time. So two long field goal misses, and the lead is still 11. Normally really reliable, two narrow misses looming large at the moment. Again this year, Allstate celebrating every field goal and PA team made by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Two missed field goals by Georgia looming big. They couldn't take advantage of their best field position at the night. Headed at the plus 32, yeah. you come up empty. Yeah, I mean, you think at least a field goal, right? In, in the way Stetson Bennett can spin it. They're thinking a touchdown. They desperately needed points. Now their defense has to step up. Play action, Stroud looking downfield, and now we're trading. A flag is out. He finds a Buka along the sideline, but this flag is in the holding zone. Holding, offense number 79. 10 yard penalty, replay first down. To so the right tackle, big Dewan Jones. First major penalty in Ohio State tonight. They smile, Munden coming on a blitz. Watch to your right, just puts that big left paw up there and brings him back. Good call by the official. Ohio State behind the chains here on the open this drive up. Impressive show of strength, but it's only cost <laughs> right. him 10 yards. Well, he's, he's, arm fully extended. He's 6'8, 360. He just grabs a linebacker with one arm. Yeah. But can't do it. First and 20. Johnson and Rossi flanking Stroud. He backpedals, is flushed again. And one more time outside the pocket, delivers to Harrison downfield. And Ringo interfered with him. Easy, obvious call. Ringo didn't mind that because it prevented a big play. Harrison was loose again. And again, we most of this Pass night. Defense number five, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Most of this night has been scrambling by Stroud and adjustments by Marvin Harrison. Look how Ringo gets lost, looking back at the quarterback, not having his eyes on Marvin Harrison. He gets behind, ball goes downfield, he has no idea where the ball is and runs right into Marvin Harrison. Shake of the head from Smart. Ringo's a big playmaker. Of course, he had the pick to seal the championship game win. Last year in Indy, but he also gets beaten a lot and he gets flagged a lot for pass interference and opponents know that they, they continue to go at him Consistently despite how talented he is and he's a first round draft board kind of guy according to a lot of the experts So that was his first and 20 Ohio State rescue from that Stroud takes off And that Georgia defense getting worn out having to chase him down. That was big from El Walthor well uh, all eyes were when this game started on Jalen Carter, 88. And a lot of people think he could be the first pick in a draft, and he's out there trying to give it a go, but he is fatigued. Look at that effort right there. I mean, he's, he's almost walking to try to catch up to C.J. Stroud. He's had his hands on his hips most of this football game. He looks fatigued. Ohio State's done a very good job on mixing looks up for him and wearing him down. 
Fatigue often an issue for the big guys who are running, but in this building, as you pointed out, it's warm. It's a lot warmer than the playing conditions these teams have been dealing with for the second part of the season. Hayden is free down the sideline. Just a shoestring tackle prevents an even bigger play, but the Buckeyes are threatening again. Well, two answers to Kate Stover being out is Rossi right here, and then the big tackle wearing 41 is Josh Fryer. So look at Fryer get a block. See Rossi get a block. There's your backup tight ends that they're utilizing. So Ryan Day to what Holly Rowe mentioned, what would they do with their formations? How would they respond with Kate Stover being out? And it's been Rossi. 17 yards is their longest run. Stroud has a man open in Sabuka. Knocked out of the 10. Ohio State threatening to bust this open late third quarter. How many times have they run this deep over route? In the same look, same action, moving that pocket on a half rollout to get him away from any potential threats. And you see the receivers working from the right all the way over and being able to get that separation again for man coverage. It's, it's almost like seven on seven when he has time it's to like throw. It. I mean, wide open on the back end. 27 yards on that one. Now can Georgia keep him out of the end zone, keep this a two score game. Hayden running hard around after a three yard gain. This is a really important moment here. The way Ohio State's scoring, you go down three scores if you're Georgia. That's three stops you got to make, and you got to get Bennett to get this guy going again. He's struggling. That's why you go back to that last possession. They, they did their job as a defense. They pinned Ohio State. They got him off the field. They got great field position, and then they're not able to capitalize. The Buckeyes are looking to make them pay for it. Second and goal. Stroud, the corner. He's trying to throw kind of a back shoulder fade to Fleming, but well covered that time by Ringo, and it's third and goal. They got the look that he wanted. He wanted a matchup. He wanted to go after Ringo. They've been doing it a lot tonight. This time it's Fleming instead of Abuka. Just not quite the same rhythm and timing that he's had tonight with Abuka and, and Marvin Harrison. But he did get the matchup and the look that he wanted. Now they move a Marvin Harrison intentionally to the right at the bottom there against Keely Ringo. Let's see if they get Stroud outside of the pocket in third and goal. It's been effective tonight. Three receivers shift over to the left, and it is Harrison on the bottom of the screen. One-on-one. -on -one. Stroud rolling, looking that way, retreating, and he'll just throw it out of the back of the end zone. There was heavy pressure. Actually, a flag comes out. I thought it was going to be way beyond the end line. Harrison worked his way back and actually made a play on the ball and is down on the field. That ball was fluttering and I thought had no chance to be completed. Harrison being attended to by the athletic training staff. It, somehow that ball almost came down in bounds on the back end. I thought it was with you. I, it was fluttering. Personal foul. Targeting. Defense number 22. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. The play is under review. Of course they'll review it. That's Javon Bullard. An enormous play. Instead of an incompletion, this would set up Ohio State in the first and goal. Kirby bringing everybody. He's just trying to buy time. Watch this ball doesn't go into the stands. It's on the back line, and there's the hit right there. I mean, he's on the back line. He steps out, but he's trying to make a play. Then the big hit by Bullard, and that's where the flag came in. Looks like he hit him with his shoulder pad. Terry Layden, the Pac-12 crew, will take a look at this one. Now, there was the helmet to helmet that time. Bill Lemagne replay took this targeting rule off. It's not rule targeting. Your thoughts? I agree with replay. I do not have targeting. He is defenseless. It was close to contact to the head neck area, but it was more to the shoulder. I did not see his head spin back from it. So the dogs do force a field goal attempt. The first of the night by Noah Ruggles, who's been almost automatic in his Ohio State career. And from 25. He makes the lead 14 now with 31 seconds to go in the third quarter. Well, guys defense shutting out Georgia in this third quarter and getting Bennett out of rhythm and building on this lead. And you talked about the importance of that drive and Buckeyes scored a touchdown there. It's three possession game. You hold him to a field goal and now you're talking about a couple touchdowns which is still significant but we've seen Georgia how quickly they came back when they're down 21 to 7. So 
obviously a long way to go in this football game. What a semifinal Saturday. That crazy thriller, 96 points scored in Glendale, Arizona with TCU outlasting Michigan. And this back and forth battle of the heavyweights. And, all right, Georgia, you earned the belt last year. You earned the SEC belt on this field. Now to keep it, to keep hope alive for a back-to-back, -back, you got to battle back in the fourth quarter. Kirby Smart trains for this, prepares for this. They got to back it up. This is tough because they've been thrown off for them a lot. Well, and the other the thing is half. you're playing a team that early in the game was coming off that disappointing loss. who was trying to re kind of reestablish confidence. Now you're playing a team with 30, 31 seconds to go up 14 in the third quarter that has a belief and has confidence. It's a touchback, so they'll begin at the 25. You know, it's been a while since you've had two entertaining semifinal games. Sometimes we're lucky to get one. Did, have we had a, Have we had two? In the same day. I don't believe I don't we have had two so. close games this, in the same year. I think no, you're right. You, you go back since 14, the games that you and I have called. I mean, the, the, the biggest game, you had Georgia playing Oklahoma, which was a great game. The Ohio State-Clemson game out at, uh, out at Glendale was a heck of a game. That's the, last, that's the last single-digit semifinal game. Was that Clemson victory over Ohio State, the controversial one in Arizona? But right most now, this of them one's sitting at 14. Yeah, most of them have been blowouts. So, yeah. what a treat! The game earlier, and now this one. Like I said, I think this one still has a lot of a long way to go. Bennett flips it short. McIntosh, stiff arm, escapes, makes a cut. McIntosh, one of the best backs in the country. Catching the ball out of the backfield all the way to the 43. Boy, once he got away there from Eichenberg, his instincts as a receiver out of that backfield just take over. They're trying to get one more play here. Yeah, exactly. Then it was some urgency. Squeeze out every second of the third quarter. Three, two. Are they going to snap it? Nope. They didn't quite get it off. So Ohio State. Up by 14. Ice packs to the eyes. It's been physical, just like we expected. End of three in Atlanta. Ohio State by 14 at the Chick fil A Peach Bowl on ESPN. Fourth quarter of the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl with a spot in the championship game on the line. Holly, what's up with Harrison on the Ohio State sideline? Ohio State's Marvin Harrison Jr. came out of the injury tent. He's told his teammates, I'm fine, I'm fine. He's communicating X and O stuff to Brian Hartline, his wide receiver coach, but they have not given his helmet back. He's sitting here on the bench without a helmet. I'm not sure that he can return. He's looking for his helmet as he takes a seat near Stroud. Already without Cade Stover, who's been taken to the hospital, and now their best receiver. Meanwhile, Georgia's got some work to do here. Bennett's on the move, looking downfield. Nobody open, checks it down. Delivers far side to Arian Smith, who collects about seven. Wanted to go deep. Well, they have coverage downfield. You know, this is a defense that came into this game with Jim Knowles after that Michigan game. They did not want to give up explosives. Mitch Rossi still icing that eye down. They wanted to keep Stetson Bennett in the pocket. They did not want to be able to give those big plays up. They wanted Georgia to have to drive the ball to have to earn their points. For the most part, that plan has worked. We've seen Georgia get out a few times on some big runs. But where is Brock Bowers been? You keep asking that question, and it's a great one. <laughs> And it across the middle. And it's complete out of the backfield to Edwards. It's a first out of the 43. I, I kind of I keep my eyes are just on 19 a lot of times. And it's it's not necessarily that they're doubling him. Georgia really not targeting him a lot. There he is. Down the middle. And Q, it's Bowers, who is open that time. And rumbles out of the 16. Is he going to play a big role perhaps in this fourth quarter? Uh, the safety came up. And that opened up the middle. Not seen a lot of openings because of the style of defense that they played. That time Ransom came up and he paid for it. And with tempo, Bennett spins free and the move could not escape the grasp of Chambers. The quickness on the edge is something that most opponents aren't prepared for from watching Bennett on tape. He's quicker than they think he is. And we've not seen a lot of that tonight. No. You and I have seen it throughout the last couple of years, but 
I think he feels a little bit of urgency now here in the fourth quarter, down a couple of scores in the red zone. This is such a big part of this game. They've been pretty effective tonight. Three or four down here. They need six on this drive. A yeah, big time field goal doesn't do much. Tight end around to Bowers. This is an effective play, but the Buckeyes are ready for it. They string it out, and Ransom got there. Limit the game to one. Well, this is great recognition by the veteran Cam Brown. He potentially could have been blocked by Rosemi Jack Saint, but because he saw this, watch how quickly he's able to get into the backfield. He didn't make the tackle, but he's able to set that edge and let Lathan Ransom clean it up. Great play by 26 here to the field. Feel like they've got two plays to get these six yards. Bowers shifts around to the right along with Delt. It's McConkie coming in motion. Pressure. Ball is out, but it's incomplete. Bennett had to get rid of it in a hurry. Buckeyes brought the blitz. And it's fourth and six. Chris, you're right. Denzel Burke brought that pressure off the edge. Corner into the boundary right here. That helps. Also see a little bit of pressure coming around. And sometimes Stetson Bennett ju just feels that pressure. No chance they are converting, but he had to get the ball out of his hands. The Big moment here. Look how efficient they've been this season. 11 of 13. But this is the best defense they've played this year. After that motion, Bennett sees a matchup that he likes. He's got time, and he delivers. And there's the catch made by Bowers. But did he get there? Where's the spot? Ransom stopped him. And it's... Yeah, he got stopped. Short. It's short. He got stopped. Buckeyes make a stop. The weapon catches the ball, but Ransom won't let him get the marker. An enormous play. After the motion, he found the one-on-one -on -one matchup, and this is the question. Could Lathan Ransom make plays to keep him away from scoring? There's the ATT 5G view of it right there. What a play by 12. Ohio State gets the ball back. Up 14, 12-10 to play. The ruling on the field of the runner short of the line to gain is... Replay has reversed the call, and it's first and goal. The acrobatic Un play by Bowers. <laughs> Game on the line, practically. Look at the left foot. It's elevated. The strength of the left hand. Trying to stay in bounds and trying to get to the line. AT&T 5G shows it to you. That left foot looked like it went out of bounds, but it goes up into the air right there. Right foot is up, and then eventually he goes out of bounds, Bill. We've got a first down because he was in bounds when he made the line the game. So this is a fantastic, and that help we had with our, our video here, outstanding. Chris, we said, where's Bowers, where's Bowers? And right here with fourth down on the line, 12-10 to go, he makes a critical play for the dogs. You we were celebrating the stop by Ransom, but the incredible effort and athletic ability of one of the elite athletes in the sport has given the dogs a first and goal. Edwards in the toss sweep makes a cut bangs down to the three Georgia gets in here Let's hold on one score game Bill let's see what happens with this turn of events here with this, this series But I, I think there are a lot of people that including myself that just need to be educated on that It's such a play you just don't see very often of course he stayed in bounds But where do you mark the ball is it when he's out? Once his hand eventually touches out of bounds once he's out of bounds then the ball's dead but he's made the line to yeah. gain already while he was inbounds. Yeah, fantastic effort, man. Great to see great players make those kind of plays. One second and goal. They fake it to Milton Bennett. Now flip it now. Underthrown. Oh, McConkey was in motion. And Bennett just short armed it to him. That was that looked like a lateral to me. Uh, I, he, may, he must have recovered it. They're going to spot the ball back there at the 13-yard line. But that ball, pass. that ball looked like it was thrown backwards. It was close. Very close. Let's take a look at this. He just short arms this. 
And usually he puts that out in front, but you can see where he throws the ball at the 12. Catches it, or tries to at about the 13 or 14. They're spotting the ball. See where he recovered it himself. Back at the 13. Third and goal. Bennett couldn't believe that throw. In the pocket, delivers into traffic, broken up, and almost intercepted. Ronnie Hicken was in the neighborhood. And Smart doesn't want to have to settle for three here, but he's going to have to send out Pat Lesney. Tough route because of the inside leverage right here from Cam Brown. But watch 14 sitting here playing center field and reading the eyes. Inside leverage by Brown. Hickman's able to jump it, get involved in it. Great coverage on the inside. Boy, Cam Brown did not have a great game against Michigan, but he's made some big plays tonight for the Ohio State secondary. So first and goal at the seven on the replay for the amazing play by Bowers, but the dogs go backwards from there. Bennett is the holder. Rod Lesney's missed a couple long ones, but made two short ones. Not what Georgia was looking for. The lead is still 11. 10-14 to play. The college football playoff semifinal at the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl is brought to you by Chick-fil-A. The Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich, an original then, an original now. Order today on the Chick-fil-A app. Verbo, a place for together. And Gatorade. Head to Gatorade.com for exclusives to help you fuel your 2023 goals. All's quiet in Atlanta. Folks glued to their TVs. Good year providing the aerial coverage, celebrating the challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Good year. More driven. Folks watching their TVs in this state. Surprised. And then you're probably stunned and certainly disappointed. The dogs are unable to find the end zone there after a first and goal at the seven. Lead is still 11, and since Bennett ran for that touchdown, six minutes to go in the first half, the Dogs have managed just a couple of field goals. Monday Night Football on ESPN wow, features the AFC one. East. Bills taking on Joe Burrow and the Bengals trying to get back to the Super Bowl again, perhaps. How could, how great of a day is Monday at ESPN? Rose Bowl, Bills, Bengals. Are you kidding me? Just set aside January 2 and just turn on ESPN. Game day in the morning, you got games on all day, you end with the Bills and Josh Allen and Burrow trying to fight for the highest seed with Kansas City and the AFC. Well, so much on the line there. Throw the cotton ball in there too. To kick throw, the, yeah, throw, throw that in there. So Ohio State back to work. We'd love to add the lead while milking the clock perhaps, although they don't generally throttle back too often. Johnson has been a contributor. Takes the toss and picks up about four on first down. How about Ryan Day pulling the lineman, pulling the lineman. Typically you run the ball that way when you pull the lineman because the linebackers are going to read that pull. And instead of going with conventional wisdom, tries to get that defense out of position and gets some better blocking angles. Stroud across the middle and Buckeye friends wanted to flag a late one came in but they're saying the pass was deflected at the line so we'll see if they pick it up he was trying to find Royer the tight end filling in for Stover there is no foul for defensive pass interference the ball was tipped I think it was right in the middle with Jalen Carter see 88 get his hand up there yeah get his left hand up there to knock that away or you're right that, I mean, that's pass interference in a first down now it's third down it's the one tackle for big 88 he's had a quiet night did a good job blocking him but that was an impact play and Harrison unable to help his team athletic training staff not giving him his helmet back after he came out of the tent and it's been a big hit Xavier Johnson along with Fleming and Ibuka Secondary players really having to step up for Ohio State. Third and seven. Play clock winding down. Stroud escapes. Doesn't do this often. But when he's needed to, he, Ryan says he got the first down. Smile Munden knocked him out. The officials don't agree. They'll spot him short. Wait, it's going to be fourth and a long yard. He did not hesitate. He saw man coverage. Pulled it down and it became a foot race with Munden and Stroud. 
Munden kind of spying there with man coverage, and he makes the play to keep Stroud short of the first down. They're going to get the ball back. Yeah, they're sending the punter out. Georgia, a lot of confusion. They weren't sure if Day was going to gamble again and go for it. But that's the stop the dogs needed. And it's a fake. The ball is snapped, and it's Rossi. They called a timeout. Oh, Georgia timeout, just Georgia. had a timeout call. The they sniffed it out. They sniffed out the fake, and Smart does a smart thing. Wow, it was going to be a gamble. Chris, let me show you why he called the timeout. I was looking at, here's the center, and look, there's nobody over here. Nobody. So they direct snap to Rossi because everybody was aligned to the right. I don't know if they must have seen it from upstairs. They communicated it downstairs to Kirby Smart, and he does the right thing and gets that timeout with that formation. Good recognition from the booth for the dogs. What gutsy call by Day. Look at Smart at the top of your screen. He's been alerted by the booth that they're vulnerable to this fake. And he's trying to call timeout. It's not hurt at first. Gets close again, and they finally, I mean, in a, with a nanosecond to spare, maybe. And let's pull back a little bit. Ryan Day in our production meeting saying, hey, man, I'm not going to leave anything. We, we're, we're coming in swinging. We're going to take chances. How about that? Deep in his own territory on fourth and one. It didn't work out. They get the timeout, but the call there. So Mirko on the move. I kick and Jackson will drift back for a fair catch at the 20. Bill, that was really close, right? Where, where some people might be saying, oh, they snapped the ball before the... the, the no question about it, it was close. But if the official grants, if he acknowledges that you're asking for a timeout, whether you're signaling it or saying I it, heard it. I heard it before that. Yeah. The so, so you get it. We can shut it down. I don't care if the ball gets snapped I got down. you. Okay, good. Well... Stetson, what do you say? 851. It, it feels like Kirk is going to have to be the passing game. We're used to seeing Georgia wear people down with the run game in the second half, the physicality, the body shots. You know, in the second half, Georgia's run it 11 times for 13 yards. Well, Ohio State. No one's done that to them. No, no. And Ohio State getting a lead got them out of that their style of play. Play fake. Launch wide open. Arian Smith. Left alone, and Georgia strikes quickly. 76 yards. Branson was in coverage, and he slipped. Smith got way behind him. That's exactly right. He's in alone there with the great speed of Smith and loses his balance in his back pedal as he turned to try to run with it. And Smith can go, the fastest receiver on this team. Great job by Stetson Bennett seeing it and making that throw. Lead is five, so the offense will go for two here. They had a two-point conversion to get to 50 against LSU here a month ago. Slightly more at stake here to make it a three-point game. Smith could not believe how open he was. He has made a huge impact tonight. Three catches for 129. Bennett delivers, and the two-pointer is good to Lad McConkey. The electric receiver battling through knee pain has been able to do very little tonight. You can see he's limping back to the sidelines, makes the catch. Just like that, they get with it three. You got man free in the middle. Man to man over here, man to man over here, and what you're gonna see is Ransom just lose his balance on the turn. Little stutter move to the inside, he turns to run, and he loses his balance. And when you play man free, there's nobody back there to help you out. So they haven't played a lot of that tonight. This time on first and 10, they do. And just like that, one defender drops, and he got nobody in the back end to take care of that mistake. It can be a lonely position, cornerback, when you're on an island, and that's a Look, that's an embarrassing play for an elite athlete, and, and Ransom is that, to, to stumble and be on the carpet and watch Smith just galloping to the end zone. And how about McConkie? Again, gritting his teeth. They bring him in there. How much can they get from him tonight with all that knee pain he's dealing with? They got a big two points there. Yeah, Ransom is a guy they put in that nickel spot, that safety spot, where he can 
match up on the interior and he gives up the touchdown. He's played really well tonight and then the two pointer with McConkie right in front of him. So another big surge back and forth. Dogs with 11 points in about a minute and a half and we got a three point game 841 to go. Well, reserve your 2023 CFP National Championship experience with the playoff premium. Prime seating, hospitality, many other amenities. Playoffpremium.com to reserve your experience today. Just for people at home that wonder about the fans, and the Ohio State starts its possession right in the heart of these Georgia fans, and it's the loudest that they've been tonight. They've handled the noise very well. It's been a poised offense tonight, and a poised quarterback. Pressure comes, they pick it up, and the completion is made. And there's that all gas, no breaks from Ryan Day. Three point lead, boom, first down throw to Fleming. They get it at eight. Got to continue to remind people you have to, your, your elite receiver, Marvin Harrison, on the sideline. His game all of a sudden creeps back to three, and your go to targets on the, on the bench after that big hit by Bullard. Xavier Johnson again in for him. Just saw Julian Fleming make a play. Second and two, Hayden off the right side, and he bursts for a first down to the 45. So no up-tempo, but they're also not milking the play clock yet. You wonder with Ryan Day being so aggressive tonight, does he, with this lead, now they've mixed their tempos up often the way Ryan Day likes to do. They've gone fast, they've showed fast and slowed things down. And right now, this is the slowest they've been all night for obvious reasons. But a heck of a run there on second down and short. Got to the edge. A lot of Buckeyes stepping up and filling big shoes. Johnson's in the backfield. They fake the pitch to him, and Stroud escapes pressure, avoids the sack, which is big, but also picks up positive yards on first down, knocked out hard at the 49 by Marshall. Stroud has shown the willingness to run it when needed. He's shown the toughness. He's shown the mobility, the playmaking on the run tonight. It's been extraordinary. Yeah, a, a gifted athlete, a great basketball player, but you're right, really known for his arm more than anything. But tonight he's had to use that mobility. Positive yards there, that scramble on first and ten. Just trying to stay ahead of the chains here. Lock inside of seven minutes. Dogs are showing pressure. He brings some. Stroud spins away. Tucks the ball. CJ Stroud still running. Toughness from the quarterback position. They're inside the 35. How about Xavier Johnson? Wide receiver, the next play, running back, pick up the blitz. Just enough to chip Bowler to not let him get home to get to Stroud. And then with the man-to-man -man coverage, C.J. Stroud with his legs again. Got 17 that time. It's a quarterback that doesn't have a rushing touchdown this season and doesn't often take off to scramble. He works out of the pocket to throw, not to run. We got an injury down with Mike Kell Williams. Go back to that scramble play. He escapes out the back door. And the pressure there, there again. Xavier Johnson, lineup receiver. Now he's at running back. Slides out at reverse. And then again, there's the speed that he has. Be able to run away from those defenders. Looking at the knee of the All SEC freshman lineman for Georgia. We'll take a break. How are you, Scott Van Pelt getting set for the postgame show? What a day of football we have had. We'll get the winning and losing perspective from Atlanta. Sonny Dykes will join us live to talk about whoever it is they're playing, and we still got that to sort out. Chris, Herbie, Happy New Year, man. Back to you. Yes, same for you, Scotty. Look forward to visiting you after the ball game. But uh, perhaps some more plot twists and turns to come. 6.02, it's second and eight with that timeout. The injury. Stroud checks it down to Johnson, and he is hit immediately by Ringo and knocked down. And it's third down coming up. 
you know, just being around this Ohio State program, C.J. Stroud has taken some unnecessary criticism at times from the local fan base about him, for whatever reason, not delivering or not scrambling, whatever it might be. Think about this. Trevion Henderson, not here tonight, been banged up all year. Jackson Smith and Jacob banged up all year. Those were two Heisman candidates in August. Now he's got Marvin Harrison down. There she is saying, come on, baby. C.J. Stroud's mom. What a performance by number seven for the Buckeyes. And he creates something on third and eight. Gets the ball out quickly. Catch made by Abuka, who spins for a first down. A big one inside the 25. Another one of those accurate darts that he is known for. It was the effort. I thought Bullard had a chance right at the sticks to make a play. They got once again attack into the inside with that outside leverage and coverage. You see Bullard is very close. A good route, accurate throw, and good yards after the catch for a first down. So they move closer to the end zone, but almost as importantly, take more time off the clock. Working the play clock all the way down here. All the way down. In fact, they were a little too, little too complacent. The timeout, timeout call to preserve five-yard penalty. You know, Ryan Day had a pretty good read on it coming in. He, he's studied the history of these playoff games. He knows that we're in the era of high-powered offenses, that it takes often 35, 40, 45 points to win these playoff games. He thought it would take that many. Right now, 38 has the lead, but looking to add on to it here. I, I, we looked at him and said, okay, you're going to score 40, 45 points on Georgia. Good luck with that. Yeah. But he knew his quarterback. Without Trevion Henderson? Without Jackson Smith and Jigba, without Kate Stover tonight, now without Marvin Harrison. And you're still trying to put points on the board with guys like Xavier Johnson, who's been a pretty much a special teams guy most of his career. Julian Fleming, who's been getting healthy and trying to come back. So it's not just trying to put points on the board. It's what he's facing in trying to do that. It's a big series with 426 up three. You settle for a field goal. You give Stetson Bennett the ball back. Two timeouts, touchdown would win it if they settle for a field goal. This is huge. Keeper, can he get the edge? Yes, he can. That was a design run. Ooh, somebody got flattened on the sideline there. Ingram Dawkins ushered him out. CJ making sure that person is okay. That wasn't a scramble, no. but he set a career high for scramble yards tonight with 34 of those. Yeah, and think about the scrambles to throw. So scrambles to run, scrambles to throw. The zone read here, great read. Again, Ryan Day's got to be so pleased on this drive with the positive yards on first and 10. There's the media member or fan that goes down, and like you said, Stroud right there to try to help out. But a positive yards gives you so many options as a play caller when you're in second and five instead of second and ten. Inside of four minutes. And Ryan Day came flying down the sidelines to make an adjustment. Stroud will be sacked. It was a slow developing play and they could not keep Dumas Johnson out of the back. That's a huge play for Georgia. Yeah, they, they roll the dice. Glenn Schumann and Kirby Smart down in the red zone. They, they bring the middle pressure there with Dumas Johnson. Outside pressure with Bullard. They're trying to to the left there with that motion and the timing off to give Georgia credit for dialing it up, getting aggressive there in the red zone. You said it, Kirk, but a field goal doesn't do is put this game away. Now third and 17. They lost 12 on that sack. Inside of three minutes. They caught again. No show of pressure. And they bring it. Stroud back pedals and flips it incomplete. He tried to work the ball back to Joe Royer, but the tight end was going inside. The ball was coming outside. And here comes the field goal team. And he's just a check down. But the, yeah, they, they bring pressure here. They bring pressure here. And it's worked for him here. The, the last few plays, you see that, that Stroud has 
Yards. The check down there to Joe Royer, but just unable because of that pressure to get it to him, which would have made this field goal much easier. Not easy from 48, but it's important. Ruggles to build the lead to six to at least force Georgia to score a touchdown to win it. Drives it. Right through Noah Ruggles, whose granddad was a season ticket holder at Ohio State. This is his dream gig. Transfer from Carolina, and he's been rock solid since coming to Columbus. Yeah, he he's, gives plenty of distance. and Looks like Pat McAfee, who's doing the mega cast on ESPN2, made a heck of a catch there. A little one-handed grab there by the big fella. That was a good job by him. But here we go. Georgia arrives wearing that championship belt two up as a matter of fact and now a touchdown does keep hope alive of a back-to-back -back championship Bennett's going to get a chance here down six Georgia's got two timeouts and if you're Kirby smart how ironic the, the quarterback that was scrutinized himself you know last year often by by Georgia fans ended up climbing that mountain to win a championship and comes back this year to be the leader and all the body blows and the fights and the momentum swings back and forth. You're at 243. You get it within six and you have a chance to give it to your guy, the guy you believe in now, to bring you home to try to win this game. Just six completions for Bennett after halftime. But this is the kind of moment that you live for. And the guy whose career has been a Hollywood script. Another big chapter coming up. Jackson tries to create some field position. And he's going to bring it back out near the 28 yard line. Counting down in Times Square. We got about uh, 15 minutes to go. This game is getting up near 2023. Dick Clark's New Year's rocking even with Ryan Seacrest is on ABC right now. But uh, we suggest you keep it right here. Yeah, you this, is, uh, <laughs> this is good stuff. You may want to watch this, this last 236. Ohio State has been able to rattle Bennett just enough pressure. They've taken away the running game. This is about pitch and catch. And again, you look for Bowers. Bennett looks across the middle. Very short completion. Immediate hit by Eichenberg on McIntosh. I think you'll see Ohio State go back to more of that zone approach that they were playing with the majority of this game. Remember they locked up in man free and saw Lathan Ransom lose his balance and a quick score to Arian Smith. They, they cannot afford those explosive plays, especially late. So you'll see a little bit more of a conservative approach relying on the front four to get home. Get, affect the timing. And it has time, flips it across the middle into traffic, and there's Brock Bowers, first down at the 45. Boy, Zach Harrison from the backside almost was able to affect this, but a great shot by Stetson Bennett, trusting this. Brock Bowers makes the play. Buckeyes did not get a man off the field. Flag is down. Bennett launching deep, jump ball, and it's broken up. It was going to be a free play. Cameron Brown was defending on McConkey, but Ohio State, a little confused, didn't get a big fellow off the field before the snap. That's exactly right. Ty Hamilton was trying to run off the field. Offside, defense number 58. Five yard penalty. Oh. Replay second down. They called it offsides. I guess he was <laughs> across the well, neutral zone, but he was on the field. Yeah, Mike Hall ran onto the field and. Ty Hamilton was trying to get off the field and he never he never quite did get off the field but he's definitely off sides and still on the field. So you take, take your place there. Yeah. yeah. Makes it first and five ball right at midfield. Georgia 50 yards away from a potential game winning touchdown. Marion Smith the speedster. Had that big play earlier in the quarter far left. Bowers lined up on the left side. Bennett steps up, delivers down the middle. Kiris Jackson makes the catch at the 15. What a strike by Bennett. But well, we saw Ohio State make a big play to Xavier Johnson with split safeties, and this time Stetson Bennett makes a very similar throw against that cover two look for the Buckeyes. Going fast, not because they have to, because they want to catch the defense. 
off guard. And there's a short completion to McIntosh at the 10. Plenty of time here. They're, they're, they're smelling Not blood. only plenty of time, if you're steps in minute, you want to warp the clock right. at this point. Slow it down. I was confused why they were playing so fast there after yeah. the big game. I mean, there, there's no reason for that much urgency. And now they start to, to slow it down, is get down closer to a minute left in this game. Ohio State, depending on what happens here, may have to start thinking about using those last two timeouts. In the final minute, Bennett from the pocket, launches to the end zone, caught, touchdown, A.D. Mitchell! A P.A.T. away from the lead, condensed Bennett's crazy, unlikely, impossibly, far-fetched career arc get any wilder. Are you kidding me? What else could happen, right? I mean, just like that, he moves his team down in five plays in 72 yards in less than two minutes for the go-ahead score. And it's Adane Mitchell, who, again, hadn't caught a pass since week two. Here's the important BAT, but Leslie's missed a couple field goals. Does his job here. 42, 41, 54 seconds remaining. Well, everything happened so fast there. You, you got to go back and take a look at a few of these throws. Mention the safety's getting wide, and you're able to hit one down the middle. And this requires throwing it on a line. If you loft it in the air, the safeties can come over. He puts that on a line, and the, and the, line, the uh, safety, McAllister, could never quite make the adjustment, couldn't see the ball. Now you got the matchup in here for the touchdown with A.D. Mitchell. And look at this move at the top of the route. Gets him one-on-one, -on -one, a little switch release. Affects maybe the, the coverage, but right there, see that little inside, uh, inside move affects Denzel Burke. And then the throw by Stats admitted he couldn't even really get anything into it. He fell back as he released that ball, but still throws it accurately. A couple things, Mitchell. Kirby Smart said we need a big game from him. He said, Coach, you haven't caught a pass since week two. Doesn't that concern you? He says it's scary as bleep to count on a guy that's that rusty. But Mitchell has stepped up tonight. Well, anybody close to the Georgia program would tell you when all these receivers are healthy, A.D. Mitchell's as good as any of them. So to see that ankle recover, you knew that they would try to get him the ball. But remember now, here's 54 seconds, and Ohio State has two timeouts, and they need a field goal down one. Lots of time for number seven. Ram Trucks postgame coming up at the trophy ceremony. It's always an interesting trophy ceremony because there's bigger things ahead for the winner. But let's see if C.J. Stroud, who trails now for the first time, since it was a three-point game way back in the second quarter. Yeah, I hate no it. Marvin Harrison Jr. out say, there. No, no, number 18 is not going to be out there, which means, again, a, a Mecca, Buka, Julian Fleming, and, and Xavier Johnson will have to make plays. No Harrison, no Kate Stover. And can the offensive line, that's been the difference tonight. When he's had time, he's made the secondary pay for it. But they pressured him that last series by bringing those backers and bringing Javon Bullard off the edge. In that Georgia pass rush, which at times tonight has looked exhausted. And they dig deep and make this series hard for Stroud. He's flushed on the run. Tucks it and takes his five yards. Looking at Ryan Day, he's going to let this go. 40 seconds, two timeouts. You got a player down. Looks like Robert Beal. Beal flexing his leg, so the Buckeyes don't have to spend one of the two timeouts. Remember, Noah Ruggles is an excellent field goal kicker with the long range, so they can get the ball near the 40. They've got a chance. Scott Howard, Georgia Radio Network, with a touchdown call moments ago. From the 10, snap it back to Bennett. He looks in the end zone, throws it for the back corner. Caught! Caught! Touchdown! Touchdown! Touchdown, A.D. Mitchell! Back left corner! Touchdown! The dogs have tied it! 
And the PAT put him ahead. Now Bennett can just look up at the giant screen overhead. Hey, there's an interesting factor here. Because of the injury, the clock. under a minute, normally would be a 10 second runoff, but they don't want it. They can go on the snap. It's Ohio to go on the snap. Ohio State's decision to go on the snap. So the on clock the will not start. Not till the snap. Till the snap of the ball. Which saves obviously that the two timeouts. Be shocked if Abuka is not isolated here. They don't try to create that matchup to him. They need about 35 yards to feel comfortable for Ruggles in a game-winning field goal. Comfortable to have those two timeouts. Long throw and a catch by Fleming, who's out across the 40. Steps out, saves the timeout. And we got another injury. I think uh, Michael Williams may be cramping. He's going down again with that same injury. How about the pickup here by Mitch Rossi? I mean, they're using everybody in this backfield. You're going to get a blitz that comes around here. He comes over to pick that up. It's all about giving Stroud enough time. Nice job right there. And they pick. That's a long throw by C.J. Stroud from that right hash all the way as an outcut to the boundary, and they get out of bounds. Again, preserving the two timeouts. Yeah, this is a factor late in games, and guys are, you know, desperately trying to stay hydrated and dig deep, but you've seen Georgia players go down now in consecutive plays. Gives... You know, Stroud and Day a chance to get on the same page here. Balls at about the 42. You mentioned, and you know, Mike Black, who's your spotter, can help out with with the distance. He hit from 52 in a pregame. So, like you said, right around the 35. Yes. So you're looking at 5, 10, 15, 20 yards or so, 20, 22 yards. To they'd, lo they'd love to not test his range. You're right. Get a lot closer if they 25 could. 25 yards would give him at least a shot with 39 seconds and two timeouts remaining. Boy, holding on to those two timeouts here to start this drive has been big. Exactly, because a sack doesn't send you into panic mode. How about Mitch Rossi, guys like Rossi and Xavier Johnson, just doing all the dirty work, right, for this, this team tonight. Kind of all hands on deck approach. Stroud. Flushed again, he's got a lot of space, right up the middle, C.J. Stroud, down into field goal range at the 30. Never in his life has he had a game like this, winning with his legs and his arm. And we talked about trying to get in around the 35 to have a chance, you know, for Ohio State fans, since having visions of Cardale Jones scrambling like that against Alabama, right down the middle of the field. But how about he waits and waits until he makes this decision. Look at the coverage. Look at everybody having their backs turned here, right? They're playing man to man. Everybody clears out and it just opens up. Nobody there to account for him. As much as he's done today with his legs coming into this game, that was not on the scouting report. I mean, sure, he's athletic, but like you said, this is a career game with what he's doing, running the football and keeping plays alive. Tessa Bennett's done that a lot to opponents, but just looking at his, you know, fellow Heisman finalists there make a play, and Ohio State's now in field goal range. Let's see how they play this, Kirk. They've still got a couple of those timeouts. Right now they have Ohio State with two. Well, they used one there, so I, I'm sure it, I think it's one. But, but Chris, that look on Stetson Bennett's face looked like because he got to know C.J. Stroud and he knows the night he's had when they scored. I think the first thing he did was look at that clock and think, how much time did I give C.J. Stroud? That timeout was taken by Georgia, by the way, so the Buckeyes still okay. do have okay. two. Okay. 24 seconds. Handoff. Hayden, nothing. He'll actually lose a yard, so now Buckeyes will spend one of their timeouts. 17 seconds to go. I mean, they're in range, but it's not super comfortable. No. With a game no. on the line, no. a spot in the championship no. game, Noah Ruggles. He says, could you get a little closer for me? Yeah, it's not like that's a chip shot from there. Ball sitting there at the 32-yard line. Georgia has outscored Ohio State here in this fourth quarter, 18 to three. They've been a tremendous fourth quarter team for the last couple of years. It's a massive emphasis. 
fighting from behind, but now that Georgia defense, number one in the country again this year, trying to get a stop. And Stroud trying to add to an absolutely sensational performance. Be a 49 yarder from here, so interesting to see Ryan Day, who's been aggressive and told us that's how he's going to be. How does he approach this with that last timeout? If you're Stroud, you cannot take a sack. You have a timeout, but you don't want to move out of field goal range. Got Rossi in the backfield with him. It's a pressure. Stroud gets it out quickly and complete on the slant. Tried to find Johnson Ringo in coverage. 15 seconds to go, third and 11. You know, Ringo has been beat a lot tonight on those inside moves by Abuka and, and also by Marvin Harrison. This time he's matched up against Xavier Johnson, and this time he looks like he's been burnt one too many times. Takes the inside approach, that inside leverage. Ball still got in there, just goes through the hands. Pressure against Stroud, spinning away. Cannot take a sack here. Heaves it out of bounds. That sack would have pulled him way out of field goal range. So with eight seconds to go, here comes Noah Ruggles. Living the moment that every single kid who has the guts to grow up wanting to be a kicker dreams about. It's a long distance field goal to send his team to the national championship game. He's made from 24 and 48. This is from 50. Kirby's standing right by the official to potentially ice him, and he will. Mason Arnold took over in mid-season as the long slamper because of an injury to Bradley Robinson. So think about all the components here you have to execute. The snap's got to be good. Holder is Mirko, the punter, and Ruggles is as steady as he comes. He's missed just two this year, and again, living his dream. Here's, here's the last play. The Georgia kid, what, they were just getting on the field. They weren't even ready. Stroud tried to catch them off guard, but Georgia brings those linebackers where they've had success in the second half, and even not necessarily being lined up and being ready, Munden still gets in there and flushes him out of the pocket. Oh, are, you, are you kidding me? 30 seconds to midnight, we got this going on? What the heck's going on? Smart can't ice him again. So here we go. Noah Ruggles. Living his dream. Kick it for Ohio State. From 50 for the win and a spot in the national championship game. It's on the way. No good. He hooked it. And Georgia is going to survive. At the stroke of midnight. The first few seconds of 2023. One kick short. And C.J. Stroud's tremendous effort. Four touchdown passes. Huge scrambles. Not quite enough. The Dogs defense made it a long range field goal and Stetson Bennett will have engineered what is the game-winning drive in the fourth quarter? See the emotion on Stetson's Bennett in his face, overwhelmed. Three seconds to go, and, and that'll be it. But this this champion was tested. The Georgia Bulldogs took Ohio State's best shot, and it was a back and forth game. Georgia advances to play TCU, deserves all the credit for finding a way to win the game, especially Bennett down by six, leads his team down and fitting championship fashion. But boy, Ohio State, man, deserves a ton of credit, especially that guy right there, number seven, C.J. Stroud. He left his heart out on his field, overcame a lot, made a lot of plays with his arm, made a lot of plays with his leg, lost his guy, Marvin Harrison, lost Cade Stover. Ohio State just kind of kept battling, and they come up a bit short. Like I said, it's all about Georgia congratulating them and advancing to that national title. Both teams played great tonight. Fourth quarter was the difference. That's what Georgia works for. It's what they train for. It's what they build their culture around. And the dogs dig deep in their backyard and earn the right to defend their national championship in L.A. And Stetson Bennett and C.J. Stroud 
massive show of respect. Two guys who played brilliantly tonight. Stroud's Ohio State career would come to an end, and Bennett, one more game to go. To me, I think C.J. Stroud earned more respect in one game than he has in two years as a player. I know Kirby Smart has a ton of respect for the job that, that Ryan Day did, but the dogs, man, what a story. You know how hard it is to defend your, your championship? What was it Alabama in 11 and 12? Ten years ago. It just doesn't happen. And the dogs will get, will get that opportunity next Monday night. Team that rarely trailed all season long. They were down by double digits a couple of times tonight. And Noah Ruggles, knowing he's got to drive it from 50, just kind of overkicks it, loses his technique there, and misses badly left. It's and kind of, we talked about the potential dream of a kicker to win it. That's that's the other side of it. That's the tough part. I, I don't know anything about kicking, but sometimes on those longer kicks, it feels like that. You know, when they, they yeah. try to, to put too much into well, it. You play golf, right? You, you try to... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the the ball, it just it didn't even have a good rotation. No. I, he just he just lost it. Is right from uh, the time it left his foot. Well, that's why it was key that it was long range. He knew he had to drive it well. He's making all the all the time like that in practice. But with the game on the line, a spot in the championship on the line, wasn't close. Man, what a different semifinal. Georgia just knocked out Michigan early last year had to fight to the final seconds Georgia defending champions TCU 200 to one long shots before the season will battle a week from Monday Wow Bill Bedell produced the game Derek Mobley directed it the Ram trucks post game show is coming up plenty to break down it's the dogs moving on the battle of the Horned Frogs in LA Welcome to the Ram College Football Post Game Show. Looks like Holly Rose got Stetson Bennett. His reaction to that game-winning drive. Well, Stetson, you got that ball with 2.36 left to play in this game. What went through your mind when you started to do that drive, how you had to win this game down by six? It's in our hands now, you know? And then when we scored, I was scared to death because they played a hell of a game on offense. I was like, damn, we scored too quick. And then our dude stepped up. What a game. What a game. You know, I don't, a little bit biased. I, I might be better in 17 Rose Bowl. I don't know, but good Lord. Wow. You got emotional with just a few seconds left in this game. How did you do it again, Stetson? Back to back to the national championship. I have no, uh, wow. You know, that, they're a freaking unbelievable team, dude. Wow. And we fall and we fall and they beat us, it seemed like the whole game. And then we came back when we needed to make a play. We had Kyrus, and then AD came back. Ah, unbelievable. AD has been out. He's been injured in and out of the lineup. How did you trust him in that moment with the biggest touchdown of your life? Just because he was out, it doesn't change who he was. You know, we had to get back on the same page. But I knew at the top of that route, there's not many people who can stay with him quickness-wise. And I just trust him. I put it up before he even came out, and I just threw it up soft, and he went and made a play. And it, wow, I mean, yeah. How does it sound if we see you next week at the national championship? God. If you had told me that when we were down, whatever we were down in the fourth, I would have been like, you are crazy. Yeah, well, we'll see you there. Thank you. Let's go to Laura Rutledge now with Kirby Smart. All right, thanks so much, Holly. Coach, you said that your team would need to win this in the fourth quarter. It took till late in the fourth quarter, but how did they do it? Great resiliency, uh, never say die attitude, great toughness. I mean, at the end of the day, we didn't play real well. Ohio State probably deserved to win the game, but we never quit. We never quit. We didn't play our best game. Maybe they didn't either, but we missed some field goals early that cost us. We stayed in the game and hit some big plays. I couldn't be prouder of these kids. This is a special group now. They've overcome. Everybody's questioning them all year. They had lack of respect from game one till now. I'm proud of them. Go Dogs. You had a moment with Stetson Bennett in the fourth quarter telling him that you needed more out of him, and then he delivered like he usually does with his back against the wall. What did he show you? Well, he showed great competitive character, but he's got to play within our system, and he's got to do what he's coached to do, or you can't win games. You know, he didn't get those opportunities until the defense stopped him, and we got fortunate to stop him a couple times. He must play better if we expect to win the next one. 
you are going to have a chance to play for another national championship. You mentioned that this team has been doubted, but why are they ready for TCU? Well, I don't know that we're ready for TCU right now. Based on what I just saw, we got a lot of work to do. So I don't know enough about TCU. I know I respect their coach and their program, and they did a tremendous job today, but we got to play better. Okay, go enjoy this, Coach. Thank you. Chris. You know, qualified enjoyment, high standards for Kirby Smart, as you'd expect. <laughs> they give up 348 passing. He says Bennett's got to do better. I don't know, Kirk, in the fourth quarter, the quarterback was 10 of 12 for 190 and two touchdowns. Yeah. I mean, and they, out, they outscored. Ohio State 18 to 3 and, and own the fourth quarter. They, they pride themselves on that fourth quarter. They pride themselves on their conditioning. You brought it up to us yesterday about what's the difference in his team. He talked about the, the physical toughness and how they train and how the, all year they work to try to get into the fourth quarter and win a game. And helps when you have number 13 and, and the poise and the composure and the belief that I think he creates and it permeates throughout the entire team. Well, how about Nolan Smith showing some emotion, man? It's a guy that you wish he could be out there playing, the leader of that defense. He's the Stetson Bennett of the defense. Took over for N'Kobe Dean. Wishes he could be out there, but like you said tonight, he's helping out as a coach, but it's great to see that for him. And he's on the stage as a captain. Bennett, be a surprise that he weren't the MVP again of a playoff game. Throws for 398 and three. Dogs win it 42-41. The Ram Trucks Post Game is presented by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Now, welcome back to the Ram Trucks Post Game. Wow. I mean, you want more than that? Good to hear zooming over top, providing the aerial coverage, road tested and game ready. Are you ready for the road? Good year, more driven. The drama of that, the, the final seconds of the year ticking down, the new year beginning just as Ohio State was lining up for what would have been a game-winning field goal. Georgia having engineered the biggest fourth quarter comeback in any playoff game in this playoff era. And so you got Georgia, the team that won the title a year ago against TCU, a team that won, what, four games? And Sonny Dykes in his first year, again, 200-1 to preseason. That was probably too short a price for that team. And they will battle it out in L.A. And, you know, it's it's nine days. It feels like the coaches would like a little more time to recover, especially Kirby Smart. They'll work on a lot because it was another performance that's uncharacteristic for, for Georgia defense. They gave up you know, 500 passing on this field to LSU. Stroud had 348 tonight. Yeah, but, you know, they, they took so many big plays, and, and it looked like Ohio State at times just in control of the game. I mean, it was C.J. Stroud. Remember, they built that big lead, and you thought, I don't know how Georgia's going to get back into the game. They can't stop C.J. Stroud in this offense, but they did. Bit by bit, they would come up with a stop. They'd get a field goal. They just stayed within striking distance. Coaches do a lot of things. Coaching staffs do a lot of things. But the collective effort to get that timeout called a split second before Ohio State executed what was a successful fake punt to prolong the drive when they're up big. That was an enormous moment in the game. It sure was. It sure was. So Georgia will collect a trophy and play for a bigger one the week from Monday. The Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl trophy ceremony down to our buddy Reese Davis. Chris, thank you very much. What a remarkable, sensational football game in a great way to ring out 2022 and ring in 2023. Congratulations to Ohio State. They played a valiant game. But it will be Georgia moving on to the national championship game and to award, I thought that might get a good reaction, to award the S. Truett Cathy most outstanding players. Joining us is the CEO of Chick-fil-A, Andrew Cathy, to present the most outstanding defensive player award to Javon Bullard of Georgia. Javon did a great job getting pressure late in that game that Georgia defense came up with the stops when they had to. And to present the most outstanding offensive player of the game, here is the president and CEO of the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, Mr. Gary Stoken, to present this trophy to Stetson Bennett.
What a great job Chick-fil-A does from the opening weekend of the season to this playoff semifinal in supporting college football and to present the George P. Crumbly Championship Trophy for the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl winner. Here is the chairman, Bob Shuler. Bob. Bob Shuler. All right, all right, everybody, congratulations. First, we've got to thank all the fans for traveling to Atlanta. How about it? Let's hear it for these fans. It's my honor to present the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl trophy to Coach Kirby Smart and the Georgia Bulldogs. behind us sort of give you a little shaky moment there and there were a lot of them tonight wow. what were you thinking when Ohio State lined up for that last field goal well I was thinking we practice that every week and uh, we got a great group of guys that really know how to push and uh, it was a great 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 block but we didn't get it blocked he missed it and uh, I thought our defense did a good job standing up there in the second half this is the ninth year of the playoff. Previously, no team who had trailed by 14 points in the fourth quarter been able to come back to win. To what do you attribute the belief in the resilience and the constant answering of Ohio State's pressure? Those men right there. Every one of those guys right there believed. They said it in the locker room before we came out in the second half. And all those fans up there, they believe too. And they better be in Cali in about 10 days. All season long as the reigning champions, you've talked about doing the hunting instead of being the hunted. So what is one more hunting trip like going against TCU for the national championship? Well, after watching that performance we just had, we got a lot to clean up. We'll move on to TCU tomorrow. I'm so proud of these guys. They never quit. They never say die. They were like a sniper tonight. They came out shooting and they never quit shooting. Kirby, congratulations. Got another championship trophy and one more to pursue against TCU in the national championship game. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, all these fans. I want to thank Ohio State. What a tremendous job their team did. A lot of respect for them and their fans. Go Dawgs. Chris, we had had just three semifinal games decided by single digits in the entire history of the playoff, and we got two classics this year, including this one, which has been as good as any of them. Bennett said he might be biased. He was comparing it to the double OT semifinal win over Oklahoma, and he was a scout team player. He played a pretty important role this last drive for the Dogs. Yeah, down six in, in a pivotal point in the game. That throw right there, there was pressure, and he just got that off to kind of get that drive started. This is the play where they had two safeties. He makes a remarkable throw with great accuracy downfield, and then one-on-one -on -one matchup. Got to find a way to get separation, and it's exactly what A.D. Mitchell does for the game winner. Georgia led for a minute 49 of this game. And Ruggles had a chance to win it at the end, but it would have been tough. Drove the 50-yarder wide left. And Georgia will take on TCU. They haven't played very often, four times over the years. Georgia's won all four. They last played in 2016. They once played way back in 42. Frankie Sinkwich, who won a Heisman Trophy. BTCU in the Orange Bowl. So that's looking ahead. We're not going to put a bow on this one. I don't know if he properly said Happy New Year to everybody. Happy New Year. What a way to finish 2022 is reset. Scott Van Pelt has post game coverage. We'll see you back here momentarily. Celebration is all.